Hello, welcome. <coughs> this is another new live stream here. Today is 7 7 uh, 2013. Uh, it's a funny number. Uh, okay, yeah, I already I have Russ Tenor here and I will switch now the video so you all can see what we are doing and uh, what we're talking here. So, okay, here he is. Okay, hi Russ, good morning. Oh, good day. Yeah, it's, Hi, Hans. It's afternoon. <laughs> good, good, good afternoon to you, Hans. Good to, it's good to be on with you again. Yeah, yeah. it was a long time that we had, uh, had our last live stream. And it was always uh, very welcomed uh, from the people. They, they like that uh, because I, I, I don't censor anything and we have a lot of time to talk. Uh, so, so today too, you know, so whatever you, we can talk. It's uh, very welcome. Uh, I, we need some updates also. I mean, this live stream uh, actually uh, was an idea of uh, uh, Sylvain Henry because uh, uh, we are all working for peace. You know, we, we don't want to uh, get controlled by the government and uh, uh, having all those wars worldwide. So, uh, uh, Russ, uh, uh, I mean, you, Russ, you, you know Sylvain, right? You remember who he is? Yeah, Ex yeah. Exactly. I'm still waiting that, that he shows off also because uh, I told you it, it was uh, his idea to to make a, a peace uh, live stream chat here. And uh, okay, I mean, for me it's always a pleasure to have you guys uh, uh, talking with with me because so I don't have to talk uh, all by myself here. And uh, yeah, because people have to know what's happening because. Uh, Mo the most, uh, most of the people they just watch TV and they don't see uh, everything what is uh, uh, really happening just just watching ah okay there's this there's another war another dead people there always bad terror not uh, uh, news and, and etc and uh, you know you and, and I we are researching more why is that happening or what they are really doing and we are talking about that so uh, it's, it's great to have you here because you know uh, a lot of things what uh, what is happening uh, not not just on that side also that side uh, up to the sky you know so uh, for the new people who don't uh, don't know you yet uh, maybe you, you can uh, just tell them uh, who you are and uh, what did you found out about what's happening in the sky you know okay the word is yours see you uh, uh, no, people watch that and understand that and uh, keep on watching because it's very very interesting okay sure sure my name is Russ Tanner I founded globalskywatch.com um, I started uh, getting involved in I first learned about geoengineering which is commonly called chemtrails which are the trails in the sky um, because uh, we began getting sprayed in Jamestown, New York, where I lived at the time in 2005. And I have a very, very sensitive sense of smell and taste. And, uh, and the, when they started spraying, I immediately could smell the chemicals in the air and I could taste the, um, the metals. And I immediately looked up online to see what the trails in the sky were and I learned about geoengineering. And for me to smell and taste it, it's not subtle. I know some people think, well, you know, everybody's sense of taste and smell are very similar, and that's not true at all. Um, some people's sense of taste and smell are far, far more sensitive than other people's are. And uh, that's why you have people who are perfumers, for instance, who can smell scents and can discern the different components of a scent, while other people would smell it and say, I can't tell anything about what's in there. Um, I have a very sensitive sense of smell and taste. So, you know, a lot of people who get involved in trying to expose crimes against humanity like this will say that they did not pick a cause, the cause picked them. And I guess that's really how I look at it is, is I don't have a lot of choice because I am suffering every day. I have an inflammatory reaction to the sprain we rarely get breaks. In the beginning, we had breaks every day. They would, plumes would come down and then the air would clear. Plumes would come down and the air would clear back in 2005. But the air has become more and more um, steady 
in terms of how many how much particulates there are in the air and so today there there's virtually no breaks the only time maybe one one to two hours out of every three months does the level of the air go down far enough where i don't taste the metal and smell the chemicals in the air uh, the rest of the time it's 24 hours a day so that's how i got involved in it i moved to maine near bangor maine to get away from the horrible uh spraying that was going on in Jamestown and still is going on in Jamestown because mm -hmm. uh, spray they were spraying less here but they have since kicked up the intensity here and it's become pretty intense here as well so I just you know I want to tell all the people out there who have um, respiratory issues who are feeling who have inflammatory issues if you have joint pain or muscle pain or headaches that can be inflammation induced by the aluminum in the chemtrails plus there are other chemicals in there um, that may be why you're sick there's also been some evidence put forth that there's mold mm -hmm. spores there may be uh, mildew um, there may be chemicals related to acetone maybe not acetone itself but acetone chemicals which is a class of chemicals um, people are reporting trees dying all over the world I'm getting reports all across the United States and in Germany and in uh, Switzerland and uh, Denmark and Scotland and uh, Ireland and Spain uh, and, of course, England um, and, and other countries. And, uh, trees are dying. Plants are dying. Myself, I've witnessed uh, the same thing that they're witnessing. We're starting to have evergreens just die. They're just starting to turn brown here in Maine mm -hmm. um, and most people don't notice this because it's like maybe one tree out of 50 or something or one you know but I'm starting to notice because I, I I always look at the trees in the forest and I live in a rural area and I'm starting to see them die but the thing that's really caught my eye is that I have a garden for the last three years and uh, the uh, we're getting spots all over the leaves. Some of the some of the plants that are just dying, um, but we're also getting spots on the leaves where it looks like somebody just sprayed acid on the leaves. Yeah. And at first, I didn't think much of it. I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a bug or there's some kind of, you know, some kind of mold or mildew or something that causes that effect. But since then, and this was this was uh, months ago. Uh, well, actually, this this was happening last summer a little bit, but. Um, since then, I've been in touch with people all over the United States and Europe who are having the exact same thing. They're getting all these burnt spots on the leaves of their plants, and their plants are just dying. Um, and we're also getting one more one more thing that's really interesting is we're getting um, this phenomenon where the leaves of the plants are curling upward. And um, in fact, I probably could show you some pictures by sharing my screen, but the leaves are are curling upward on the edges and I've talked to some people who are uh, horticult horticulturalists and they said that this is the uh, the appearance of the leaves looks like the plants are being sprayed with an herbicide so and this is happening all over I'm getting reports all over the United States and all over Europe that this is happening yeah. Mexico uh, the same and I've Mexico the same I just see uh, in the chat box uh, here on the live stream channel that uh, same in Colorado and Hawaii. Uh, people are commenting already. There are, every minute there are more people watching this. Thank you so much. Welcome all the, uh, who are watching this. Listen, uh, that what Russ Tanner is telling. He's really, really very good in, uh, in uh, giving all these informations. It's, uh, I think it's uh, it's your life, right? Uh, I don't know if, if you have another uh, job or, or, or I mean, if you're doing other things because I see you uh, almost 24 hours uh, posting also on Facebook on your group and uh, uh, on your website the global sky watch and everything I mean uh, you spend a lot of time for for this so I mean this is really something very important that I hope people will now also check out more the new people uh, uh, at least who, who are uh, watching this the first time because this is really a, a very important issue here okay keep on talking my friend yeah no you're you're absolutely right <clears throat> um, this is the biggest issue in history. Yeah. 
Um, I do every Saturday. I do a talk show with Dane Wigington and Richard Sachs. We all three co-host together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, Geoengineering Watch Radio, and uh, Dane Wigington has uh, has worked for uh, large. He worked for a company called Bechtel, yeah. um, setting up solar or designing. I'm not sure exactly what the what the procedure was, but he set up put together solar systems. So he's very uh, educated in solar sciences and uh, Richard Sachs who has a long long history in um, in health and I also have a background in you know uh, herbology we do my company uh, does herbal research so what I do is I am online doing this a lot but I try to split my time with my business which is called herb allure it's herb like herbs you take, uh, herbs and vitamins, Herb Allure, A-L-L-U-R-E dot com. Mm -hmm. And it's really not a website that we sell things to the public. We actually support other herbalists. We collect research about herbs, scientific research, and we compile them into books, computer programs, and websites, and then we sell the information to the herbalists so that they can distribute it to their um, to their customers so, so customers can become educated about herbs. Um, so that's what I do. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, lot. I'm online all the time, even when I'm programming and doing work for my business. I have uh, Facebook and other windows open so that I can monitor our Facebook group and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, stay connected with what's going on from minute to minute. Yeah. So, you know, we are facing, this is the largest crime against humanity in human history. This is... I want to scream from the rooftops. I am suffering every day. It's in the air right now. In fact, I have, for those who haven't seen it yet, on one of your many past shows that you've done, Hans, here's my wet mask. This is a this is a painter's <laughs> mask that you yeah. can get. Yeah, this this is a painter's mask you can get from Home Depot. God, uh, it's uh, I can uh, I can almost read the number. I forgot the number, but it's just a Home Depot painter's mask, mm -hmm. and this doesn't really remove the particles because the particles are too small. Yeah. So what I do is I have how much uh, two washcloths. Uh, how much uh, how much money cost cost uh, those kind of ma uh, masks? Uh, it's I think it's less than five dollars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I will get one okay. for myself because we are also getting sprayed here and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't taste them like you, but uh, uh, I get sick of them. The last time when we had the, the cross one, you know, it, it's really it looks like a cross or like an X. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, not only me that uh, was getting sick of that. All the the, the Mexicans here around me, uh, I noticed that they had a, a flu. That they they, uh, they were even vomiting in the morning. You know, be, uh, be, before you wake up here, uh, where I live, uh, uh, I can hear almost the, the neighbors. You know, when they they put the the TV or when they put the music. And also when they are vomiting, you know, so it's very disgusting because you <laughs> <laughs> in the morning, oh, no. and, and not, not because they are drinking beers, you know, it's also the women, uh, they, they really felt bad. It sounds kind of funny, but they, uh, it, it's 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 uh, it's hard to to to, to see that, uh, or I mean, it's horrible to 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 um, to see that they are getting sick because not of a normal sickness because maybe because of this one you know of the, those those kind of chemtrails because it's it's uh and it was reported worldwide that uh, it, i think it started in uh, second of december last year uh here in mexico it, there was the, the cross and i was checking out also uh, my facebook friends were also uh checking out the skies and everything and they they uh, were to, uh telling the same there, 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 there was even a website uh, uh i aren't you sick yet or something like uh, like this they were talking about all those uh, um, uh, yeah, effects of those chemtrails and uh, I think they they sprayed some chemicals there to make the people sick that they go to the doctors and spend money there and the medicines and everything because this is the, the normal thing what people are doing you get sick the first thing is okay I'm sick I have to go to the doctor let's see what happened and then they, uh, they give you maybe a va uh, maybe even a vaccine because they, they will ask uh, ha uh, ha uh, when have you uh, taken your last vaccine yet uh, no if you have you taken your, your uh, uh, a vaccine uh, yet or whatever and they say no okay now we have one for free uh, because uh, you know every year uh, f uh, or uh, 
every end of the year there's the the, the normal flu you know of uh, that people are getting sick and they uh, I don't know what they're giving you for vaccines and what is inside of the those chemicals but they, they're not that uh, healthy either you know so this is what well, what I can re re report and I, I'm still kind of sick I don't know if it was from the chemtrail or not but my hand is uh, uh, it's, it's kind of dry here I, I have a cream I, I, I put always a cream it disappears a bit then it comes back so I don't know if it's 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 kind of uh, chemtrail uh, made this kind of sickness because it's it's not a fungus uh, because uh, it's it's just on that hand and uh, uh, the doctors here uh, uh, they they say no I, I, I haven't seen that uh, in my life what you have here on your hand so I don't know <laughs> what is that shit here okay okay keep on talking it's just a, a small input of uh, what's happening here. Well, yeah. Oh, I'm getting a commercial on the U stream here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have to. Yeah, put it on I have mute. to go off the U stream. Uh huh. Oh, just yeah, I have the mute on, but it, the commercial played anyway. That's strange. But anyway, that's okay. So, um, yeah. So the the mask that I use, I, I the painters the painter's mask actually doesn't stop anything because the particulates being sprayed are too small. Mm -hmm. um, what I do, what I do is I have um, uh, I have two washcloths that I fold into quarters, mm -hmm. and I fold them into quarters and put them in the mask like this, and then I put this over my mouth in those, and then strap it on. Okay. And this is what I wear. In fact, before you called me so that we could do the show, I was wearing this because the spraying for the last 24 hours here has been insane. They've been just nailing us with acetone type. There's different types of chemtrails, the acetone type and the metallic chemical type, mm -hmm. and another type I call the blunt metallic type. They've been hitting us hard. And the acetone and the uh, blunt, uh, the acetone and the uh, metallic chemical are the two worst. What I do with this then uh, is I will take and open these up these washcloths, let me see if I can get it in the camera. Um, like here's one washcloth on top of another. What I'll do is fold back the first washcloth mm -hmm. like this and then I'll put peppermint oil and, and or cinnamon oil. I've got peppermint oil here okay. and I will take that and put a few drops in here on this second, on the washcloth that, that doesn't touch my face, and then I flip this one back up, so that way the peppermint oil is not against my skin because it can. Peppermint oil is pretty strong. Cinnamon oil is also very strong. It can burn your face, so you generally don't want to keep that against your skin uh, for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And then I fold it back up, and then put it on with the mask over. And really, the job of the mask is just to hold the washcloths. Now the washcloths are wetted with water. And what happens is with most of the chemtrail types, because I can taste and smell it, I can tell you that this stuff blocks most of the stuff coming through. No HEPA filters work. I have tested IQ Air, I've tested Allen Air, uh, carbon filtration devices, uh, air ionizers. The only type of, of devices that removed anything from the air were water -based. They didn't work 100%, but they did remove some of the particulates from the air. Now, just to let you all know that I can tell that these HEPA filters do work against pollen. They do remove odors. They do remove smoke because I have a wood-burning stove in the house. And uh, I turn on any of those HEPA filters and the smoke clears right from the air. If there's pollen in the air, which tickles my nose and sometimes makes me sneeze, I'll turn on those air filters and the pollen clears right up. So the HEPA filters are working, but they do not remove the smell or the taste of the chemtrails from the air. So I have to use the wetted washcloths, and I put the peppermint and the cinnamon oil on the inside uh, uh, inside washcloth, mm -hmm. and these are wetted with water. And I think what happens is most of the chemtrail types, as they pass through here, they bind with the water, and they get stuck. Mm -hmm. And if they're spraying moderately, these washcloths will last uh, two to four hours, and then what will happen is within about a five or ten minute period of time, they'll they'll get saturated to the point where I start tasting the chemtrails right through the washcloths. So then I will put these in the hamper to be washed. I'll get two more washcloths, wet them, 
put the oil on them and use them. If they're spraying us really, really heavy, these uh, washcloths will become saturated in 10 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to change them out every 20 minutes. Oh but I mean, that's what I have to do to protect myself. And it really, not only can I tell they're working because the the smell and taste of the of the the metallic and the chemical smells and tastes are removed mm -hmm. uh, 80 to 90 percent by this, but I can also tell they're working because my symptoms decrease when I have this on. Another benefit of the peppermint oil and the cinnamon oil is that they're both antifungal, antiviral, uh, anti-mold and mildew. They kill mold and mildew. So if you have uh, infections, uh, viral mold and mildew infections, as you breathe those oils into your lungs, they can help to mitigate those infections. Mm -hmm. So good for the rest of your system. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, for, for what is the peppermint? Why, why you put that oil there? What, is, what does it do? Uh, the peppermint oil um, is uh, is uh, anti. Uh, it, it kills bacteria. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it kills bacteria. It kills uh, mold and mildew. And I believe that they're spraying mold spores, and they're promoting. We have we have mold and mildew growing outside everywhere over plants, even on our vehicles. I mean, um, there it's it's unbelievable. I, I need to take some pictures of this, but there's green mold and it's and it's kind of dry you know it, it if it's moist out like in the morning if there's a little dew or something i guess that's when it grows because then by the time the sun comes out and it dries out we've got this almost cross hatched pattern mm -hmm. of of mold uh all over the truck you know it's green mm -hmm. and it's almost like it, it's like the truck's been underwater for you know a few days or a few weeks in the ocean and and stuff has grown on it and you've taken it out dried it out but this is happening right in the open air so the peppermint oil helps to kill those things because you've got to you want to keep mold fungus mildew viruses bacteria uh, out of your body of course and in the peppermint oil and cinnamon oil both kill those things okay so i didn't know yeah they that. help a lot okay no, plus they keep the mm -hmm. plus they keep the washcloth smelling fresh and, and nice it smells like peppermint it's very a refreshing and peppermint helps to make you more alert. It wakes you up and and uh, has a positive effect on your emotions and on your uh, uh, on your uh, uh, you know just being awake helps keep you awake. So mm -hmm. it's got those benefits as well. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. I have to check that out too because uh, <laughs> I think we have to to be prepared for that. You know. I mean, this is horrible. <laughs> now, I mean, it's. It, 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 we are living in a, in a time we are getting attacked from the government. I mean, this is what, what what's happening with the world. You know, it's uh, it's unbelievable. I, I I still I don't get that. I don't know why they do that. Do you have any any idea why why they're doing that? I mean, it's uh, it's crazy. But what do you think? Yeah. Uh, the bottom line is it's all about control. Yeah. Um, the government. The government has published, uh, you know, in 1992, 1993, there was the real, con the Rio conference in Rio, um, and out of that conference came a document that was uh, published by Henry Kissinger, oh. and that document, yeah, that document talks about um, the plans for depopulation, for controlling the population. Um, and the reason that they want to uh, uh, control population has to do with power. Um, the people who, um, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you're when you're your normal person. I, I call them the person who doesn't really understand what's been going on uh, in the world for the last two hundred years. Um, it's hard for them to grasp what's going on, but what's been going on is there's been a small group of a few very powerful families that have a tremendous amount of money. They are the secret shareholders of the Federal Reserve Bank, and what they've done is they created the International Monetary Fund. They've systematically destroyed countries. Um, they would they would uh, oppress countries through certain mechanisms, and then when the governments needed money. They would loan the money to the governments with strings attached. You know, the governments had to do certain things, and and when they when they did that, 
um, they eventually got their own politicians in those countries and they've been doing this for a couple hundred years they've actually been doing this for a lot longer with with uh, other throughout history really um, and it's the same groups of people but um, in modern times in the last couple hundred years they've actually um, uh, infiltrated the governments of the countries put their own politicians in and now the leaders of every country in the world with the possible exception of Venezuela um, have been uh, are, are completely controlled by these people who have been working for 200 years or more to infiltrate these governments now the reason I'm giving all this background is because if you don't understand this uh, then the rest of this won't make sense and I know it's hard for people who are new to grasp this because it sounds conspiratorial mm -hmm. and it is conspiratorial but it's foolish to believe that conspiracies don't exist conspiracies have existed throughout history and with today's technology it empowers the conspirators more than has ever been possible before you can communicate around the world in seconds you can uh, fly materials you can mobilize armies you can surveil the, the survey the the populace you can monitor communications there's there's never been a time in history where so much power has been available to so few people to control and survey people That's and right. to uh, oppress them you know oppress them militarily mm -hmm. so these people have used that and what they want to do right now is they're securing their power and what's happened historically is in the Roman Empire, in, uh, in ancient Egypt, what did the leaders do to secure their power? They want to secure their power. Once they have that power, they don't ever want to lose it. So what did they do? This is what they did, and this is just history, is they declared themselves to be gods. Mm -hmm. They did. They said, we are, we are, we are a god. We are... Um, you know the emperor is a god the pharaoh is a god you have to bow down to him and he can kill whoever he wants and he can do whatever he wants because he's a god and he's all-knowing and he's this that and the other thing and this is this is nothing more than mankind they're just men they're mortal men like everyone else so you know it's nothing exotic it's just people who get power hungry um they declare themselves to be gods and that's a, a method that they use to secure their power. What's happening today is the same thing. Uh, we're moving in that same direction where we have a small group of people. They haven't declared themselves to be God publicly yet. But they actually subscribe to a religion which they call the mysteries or the mystery schools. And if you, if you want to understand what's going on inside their heads, you need to learn about their religion. And it will it will make everything make sense it'll make you understand why they do such horrible things um, this religion tells them that they will achieve godhood essentially I'm condensing it a lot because it's very big and complicated but uh, essentially that they will achieve godhood eventually will be granted to them through their through technology so they achieve uh, they they're going to achieve immortality and eternal power through technology that's what they believe so it's through knowledge and technology so what these people and I give you all that background to say this is that you you asked why is this going on you know who's doing this these people this this small group of families who have been uh, really uh, part of the mystery mystery school religion for years um, are the people who are doing this and they use this belief system <clears throat> to justify uh, anything their philosophy in their mystery schools religion is the end justifies the means that's what's that's what they say so uh, as long as you achieve your goal it doesn't matter how you do it it's all right it's all moral and it's okay and uh, so these people who are doing it um, have taken over the countries of the world in the last uh, 200 years and the evidence you can see of this is that the, they have a yellow fringed flag if you go outside in, in the United States, if you go to your county courthouse and you look out front, you'll see an American flag and possibly your state flag flying. And they're, they're normal flags. However, if you go inside and you go to the tax collector's office or you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles, there's a different flag. Now, I challenge people, go in there and do this. You'll always see this and because it's law. It's their own law system. They set it up this way. 
you may look at that flag next to the the judge in the courtroom or in the department of motor vehicles or at the tax collector's office and you may say well, well that's the state flag and that's the united states flag look carefully look carefully it isn't it has a golden fringe around the outside you can't take an emblem or a flag of a country and add something to it and have it be the same flag the flag is the flag it's exactly what it is the way that this works is that these people have um, for instance when you get a driver's license is you're getting a contract when you sign a driver's license you're signing a contract and um, that contract you are agreeing to obey all of the state statutes okay and you agree to obey, obey any tickets you agree to to uh, to do whatever the police tell you to do for instance so you're you're actually um, putting yourself into a type of uh, slavery you're agreeing to just obey 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 no matter what and what you do is you have to um, typically pay a fee and all of these these types of contracts because there's a financial exchange they're governed by the uniform commercial code and if you go to the law library you can see this big set of books called the uniform commercial code mm -hmm. and in the uniform commercial code there's a section 1-207 that says that you have the option and the uniform commercial code provides a way for you to keep your constitutional and common law rights in the execution of any contract um, when you engage in a contract and it has to provide that because the court system says that if a law system does not provide remedy and recourse uh, in other words you have to be able to have remedy if you're damaged you have to have recourse um, if these elements are not present in a law system then the law system is immoral and null and void essentially I'm condensing this so in order for the uniform commercial code to have any power to, to be moral it has to have a way for you to maintain your English common law rights and your constitutional rights anytime you sign your signature to a contract such as a driver's license so for instance I know I'm on a tangent here but uh, this is getting back to who these people are for instance my business partner when we lived in Florida uh, went and got every so many years you have to have your driver's license renewed and what she did is she um, she uh, signed uh, her name on her driver's license and what the uniform commercial code says it says if you want to maintain your English common law uh, or your constitutional rights in the execution of any contract because normally the driver's license takes away your constitutional rights you don't have any more rights um, but if you want to maintain those if you want to maintain those rights you need to do one of two things above your signature you need to write the words without prejudice or above your signature you need to write the words 1-207 1-207 is a section where in the UCC where where this uh, stipulation uh, is, is placed and if you do either of those two things then you don't lose your constitutional or common law rights in the execution of your driver's license contract well Laura actually did that in Florida years ago and she um, uh, a, a while later it might have been a year later she received a a letter from Tallahassee which is the capital of Florida uh, from Harry Scott who is uh, the chief of records now this was a long time ago so he's probably not still there but that was the name of the guy I'll never forget it mm -hmm. and it said that there was an error issuing your license there was an error issuing your license we'd like to correct this error please go down to your local Department of Motor Vehicles office and they will issue a new license for free aren't we wonderful aren't we great but in the, in the little print in the bottom it said if you fail to do this within 30 days your license will be revoked <laughs> so uh, you know it was like oh okay so this is kind of important because I won't have a license in 30 days well unfortunately uh, uh, Laura was in her rights to sign without prejudice above her name under the UCC in the execution of her driver's license contract because she didn't want to give up her constitutional rights so she was in rights the full rights to do that Harry Scott in sending that letter was coercing under the color of law Laura uh, and even threatening to remove her license under false pretenses and she did it through the mail so this constitutes mail fraud this is malfeasance under the color of law 
and it violates some other fundamental principles of law. So Laura wrote a letter back stating those things, saying, you're committing mail fraud. I have every right under the UCC to sign without prejudice. There is no error. That is my signature. Uh, if you contact me again on this matter, then I will uh, prosecute you for these things, malfeasance under the current law, color of law, um, mail fraud, and so on and so on. Never heard back from Tallahassee, never got a letter back, was sent certified uh, back to Harry Scott, never received any response back, and her license was never canceled. And this is the bottom line, is you understand how these structures are set up and how they have, have removed your rights, um, this is one of the methods they've used, but the public doesn't know and understand this, so they end up caught in this web of law, and they have no idea. It's like they ask these questions, where are my constitutional rights? Why don't I have any rights left? It's because you voluntarily gave them away. You voluntarily gave them away. And that's one of the methods that these people we're talking about who are spraying us use, is that in Public Law 10585 says that they have the right to spray you even if it causes damage to the environment or kills you. And you are subject to that law because you volunteered to be under this law system. Now there's more, I understand there's, there, there are probably some, maybe some technical people who are hear this video and they'll say, well, there's more to it than that and that's absolutely right. I'm not going into my five hour explanation of all this stuff because it's, it's very long and drawn out. But conceptually, that's the way it works. To condense it, that's the way it works. So they gave themselves permission, and I will look up the law, uh, the law right now that they passed. I have it on GlobalSkyWatch.com. Mm -hmm. It's t it's a, in a post titled uh, "U.S. Law uh, Allows Testing of Chemicals and Biological Agents on Civilian Population." Here's what it says. This is Public Law 105-85, signed November 18, 1997. You can go at Cornell University Law uh, uh, Depository online, and you can look this up yourself. Use of human subjects for testing of chemical or biological, uh, biological agents. Section uh, 1078, restrictions on the use of human subjects for testing of chemical and biological agents. So right up front, it sounds kind of good. It's going to restrict the use of, of these biological agents on testing uh, uh, human test subjects. Here are the prohibited activities. Section A, Secretary of Defense may not conduct directly or by contract one, any test or experiment involving the use of a chemical agent or biological agent on a civilian population, or any other testing of a chemical agent or biological agent on human subjects. Well, that sounds really good. The Secretary of Defense can't test any of these things on humans. Uh, that's what it says right there in that law. Isn't that wonderful? It's protecting you. Well, let's move on to section B, very, very next section. Exceptions. Uh, subject to subsection C, D, and E, the prohibition in section A, which is what I just read to you, the prohibition against testing, is what they're saying, does not apply to a test or experiment carried out for any of the following purposes. So in other words, they just said you can't test on humans. You can't test biological uh, agents or chemical agents on humans. That's what the law just said. Now section B says Oh, but here's a list of exceptions to that law. That that law doesn't apply under these circumstances. Here they come. You ready? Mm -hmm. um, any peaceful purpose that is related to medical, therapeutic, pharmaceutical, agricultural, industrial, or research activity. Two, any purpose that is directly related to protection against toxic chemicals or biological weapons or agents. In other words, if they're saying we're testing these for their protection. Mm -hmm. Or section three, any law enforcement purpose, including any purpose related to riot control. So basically what they said in this law, is says we can't test biological or chemical agents on the human population except for any reason we want. <laughs> okay. Incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. And is that really... Uh, it is incredible. Uh, uh, I mean, that document really exists officially that people really can uh, see that. I mean, uh, uh, you, you just read it like like, like uh, you have it in front of you. So, uh, uh, I mean, maybe there, there are some trolls outside. They say, nah, you're, that, that's not true or whatever. So you really can even read that, right? Like a normal uh, uh, citizen, you, you can get access to that document. 
Yeah, I, I invite anyone to come read it. Go to globalskywatch.com. Wow. Uh -huh. And then uh, click on Forum Community in the menu up at the top. There's a link called Forum Community. Click on that. And then up at the top of this page, there's a list of, that's called Our Most Popular Videos, Audio Clips, and Articles. And it's the one, two, three, four, five. It's a seventh article to the right because they're, they're listed horizontally. And there's a scroll bar so you can scroll way to the right and see more and more articles. But the seventh article to the right says U.S. law allows testing, uh, chemical testing on civilians. <laughs> And I was saying all, and you can go and read that yourself, anyone who wants to read it. And I'm saying all this to say is that these people have enslaved the people of the world in every country using the yellow fringe flag technique, using this Admiralty Maritime Law, using the Uniform Commercial Code, for you to voluntarily give up your rights in the execution of your contract when you pay your taxes, when you get a mortgage, when you get a driver's license, when you accept a Social Security number, even when you spend money. Spending Federal Reserve mm -hmm. notes. Notes are not money; they're debt certificates. And the spending, spending that so-called money, which really isn't money because a note can't be money, but when you exchange debt certificates, that's a privilege granted to you by the United States Corporation. And when you do that, there, the, any time you exercise that privilege, considered a privilege, when you exercise that privilege, you are suddenly bound by all of the terms of the contract that are attached to the exercise of that privilege. That's why when you watch TV, you might see uh, insurance commercials and they'll say, you know, benefits and privileges. Mm -hmm. You know, like you hear that term a lot, you know, you know, our insurance, you know, you, our, our program offers you benefits and privileges. Yes. Well, why do you hear those words say like that? Because that's directly out of the Uniform Commercial Code, uh, benefits and privileges. When you exercise a benefit or you accept a privilege granted by an entity, then you are suddenly accepting all of the terms of the contract that are attached to the exercise of that privilege or benefit. <laughs> so you're suddenly in a contract. You've made an agreement, not because you've said anything with your mouth or you signed a paper, but because you've actually done something. You've exercised a privilege. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is said spending uh, Federal Reserve notes is a privilege. So if you spend Federal... So basically what they've done is they set up a system that you cannot survive without exercising privileges that they've granted. And since you're exercising those privileges, you are bound to the contract that they've attached to, to that. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you're stuck. There's nothing you can do. Now the way out of that, of course, is that it's immoral to attach people to a contract if they don't know that they're in the contract or they don't understand the terms of the contract. So that's the way out. You don't understand the terms. You don't uh, know that you're attached to this contract, so you're you're operating either in ignorance or under duress, where you're being forced to do it because it's the only way you can survive. Um, so the people who are spraying us, getting back to that, are the same people who have set up this system of law to entrap the people of every country of the world, because every country has a yellow fringe flag. You go into your your government building, you go to the tax office, you will see that yellow fringe flag. It doesn't matter if it's Germany or Switzerland or Mm -hmm. uh, Egypt or Korea, it doesn't matter, Asia, all of these countries have been taken over by this system, yeah. with the possible exception of Venezuela, because they've tried to get, that's a long story, they they tried to get Chavez out several times, he was reelected by the people, uh, the CIA tried to, tried to rig the elections, uh, and that's why uh, Chavez has gotten so much, had gotten so much pre uh, bad press, because they really, uh, they really hated him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he offered free, uh, or discounted uh, gasoline to the uh, after Katrina hit uh, Louisiana, but that's a whole other story. Uh, so every country in the in the world has been conquered, with the possible exception of one country. Um, but again, that's you'd have to look at the finer points and see if they're still ex exercising under that venue, which they probably, to at least some degree, are because they probably accepted you know IMF monies and so on and so forth. Um, have been taken over. So who is spraying us? The same people that took away your constitutional rights, the same people that entrapped you in this web of law that is so deep that you can't possibly understand it, even though you hear this thing that says ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, how can you not be ignorant of the law? Because it would take you more than five lifetimes to read it all. So ignorance of the law <laughs> is, you can't avoid ignorance of the law because it's, it's, uh, it's impossible for a human to understand if you filled up all of the federal law that's ever been published, it would fill up a football stadium three feet deep. 
Um, and how are you ever going to read that in a lifetime? Yeah. Guess, guess. So that's those those people are the ones doing that. Uh -huh. Guess what? Now we know who they are. We just have to follow the li uh, the all that line to know the really uh, people who are in charge of the chemtrails. I mean, it's like when you buy a book, you know. You, in, in the book, you can see the publisher, you can see the, the, the guy who wrote the book, and you know the, the person. So why we don't investigate who wrote that, the names, and go back and back and back like a detective work, you know, and then we, 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 we have them. We have them. It's, it's a, a beautiful information you just gave us because they admitted it. I mean, they are now visible. They are visible in wards, but wards uh, are made from men, so we, we can get them, we can get them. I mean, uh, I'm here in Mexico City, I, 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 I cannot do that by myself, but maybe there's someone outside who has the possibilities, maybe a de detective, uh, they can research, or maybe the anonymous people who, who are so good in hacking and everything, you know, and maybe uh, with that kind of information you just gave us, we really can find who is behind all this. You can really find the names, and uh, when you have the names, you know where they are living, you know uh, with whom they are talking also, and then maybe we, we can go to the top of the, 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 the pyramid who is controlling us. What do you think about that? Right. Well, I think we once we understand the nature of the system, uh -huh. the system has been modified and laws have been modified over and over and over again to entrap us so that there's layer after layer after layer so if we break out of one layer there's another one if we break out of that layer yeah. there's another one um, you know the one of the most common questions I get asked are how do we stop chemtrails because there's two different questions you know that you people want to know how to get free from the system but because people like me are suffering so badly from the effects of the, the spraying mm -hmm. and it is badly I had a heart attack in 2011 uh, directly induced by this I know many people are having respiratory problems their kids are suffering they're throwing up they're having chronic headaches body aches pains fatigue so on and so forth because these metals are toxic that you're breathing in and they're extremely small and the smaller the particle the larger uh, the smaller the particle the larger the surface area so they do more damage and that's one of the reasons they're small I think there's a couple reasons why they're small mm -hmm. so the thing is 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 the you know how are we gonna stop <clears throat> chemtrails how are we gonna uh, how are we gonna if we deal with that question um, I believe the very first step is we have to educate the public about what's going on the reason this program is being lied about they're lying and saying this program isn't going on they're saying that those lines you see coming out of jets in the sky are harmless water vapor condensation trails which is a lie they are not condensation trails the short ones are also not condensation trails condensation trails are extremely rare the conditions in the upper atmosphere are 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 very consistent the jet engines that all use the same premise is the for combustion they use the uh, basically the same fuels and some people see one jet with a trail one jet without a trail that's because the jet with a trail even if it's short is spewing uh, aerosols mm -hmm. aerosol what aerosol really means is it means it contains uh, fine particles it's a particulate trail and these particulates are metallic uh, and other other things as well but I believe they're toxic metals as uh, as evidenced by the myriad and growing pile of soil tests what rainwater tests blood tests we're finding aluminum barium strontium mercury all over the place all over the place in all of these countries so the first thing we need to do the reason they're keeping these programs secret why do you keep something secret because you don't want the public to know about it why 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 do you want to keep it from the public if it was good right then you'd want the public to know and you would say look look at what good we're doing we're helping you they keep it secret because it's bad it's harmful it's a crime against humanity and they keep it secret number two because they don't want the public to rise up against it because they fear the public if the public the public has a long history of rising up against certain types of oppression mm -hmm. and when the public rises up together and we're even talking like three percent of the public I'm not even talking about hundred percent but when you have a, a, a even a small percentage of the public like two or three percent rise up they are forced to back off mm -hmm. and they've done that with herbs they've tried to re get rid of herbs in the United States they have tried to do many many other things and their plan to implement these things has been 
uh, pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back because the public woke up and got involved and did something about it. Well, what they're trying to do now with spraying these things is they're trying to oppress people even further by dumbing people down and making people so sick, so tired, so fatigued, so unable to think clearly. And this is what Dr. Russell Blaylock, which many of you have heard of, talks about the, uh, the chemical dumbing down of America. And it's not just America, it's the entire world. <laughs> is that these metals have this effect on people. So the public, once the public will learn about this, then we will have the political power to stand up and say no, and furthermore, to stand up and say those who have committed this uh, this atrocity against humanity, and it is, there is nothing, nothing in history that comes close to the damage that's being done right now to everything, all life, human beings, plants, animals are dying, yeah. plants are dying, People we have huge dying. animal die-offs, People are dying. People are dying. I know. Mm -hmm. That's right. People it's are dying murdering. too. It's I know murdering. more. It is mass murder. Yeah. I mean, this what they are doing is is not it is not paralleled in history. It's not even come close in history to what's going on right now before our very eyes. But they're doing it very slowly. They're doing it very subtly, and they're doing it in a way where people have a hard time putting the metals together with the disease, just like. Um, just like they cover up the association between mercury and 200 of the most common diseases, whether it's it's ankylosing spondylitis, whether it's uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, liver problems, whether it's diabetes, whether it's cancer, whether it's eyesight problems, nearsightedness or farsightedness, whether it's depression, whether it's OCD, whether it's uh, panic attacks, whether it's chronic migraines, whether it's arthritis, and I could go on and on and on. 200 of the most common diseases caused by mercury. And what has the government done? They have promoted the use of mercury in the United States and around the world for decades. We've known that these things are associated with diseases, and the more research that comes out, the more we find out they're associated with more and more diseases. Yet, the government has covered these things up, has continued to lie about them and say, oh, amalgam fillings are safe, which they are not safe. They first used, they used to say that no uh, uh, mercury comes out of dental amalgams. Why do they do this? When Dr. Boyd Haley discovered connections between autism and mercury, the National Institutes of Health and the uh, who grants uh, money, research money, you you would have thought that they would say, "We're going to give you more money. This is tremendous. This is a, a great discovery." Um, and in fact, uh, Dr. Boyd Haley in a video talks about how his colleagues were saying, "You're going to be able to write your own check for research. You're going to get grants. I mean, you're set for life." You know, you're, you're going to get so much money because of these discoveries you've made. So what did the National Institutes of Health uh, do? Did they grant him more money after he made these incredible discoveries about the association between mercury and these diseases? Nope. They pulled all mercury-related funding. Why? Why? That doesn't make sense. If you don't understand the structure of the system that's going on, if you don't understand their purpose, this doesn't make sense. But when you do understand that the purpose is to keep you dumb, to keep you sick, to keep you unable to fight back, and they also profit from your illness, of course, because the pharmaceutical company is run by one of these families, as is the oil company. Um, if they can keep you suppressed, then it makes it harder for you to fight back. So these are the same people they own and control the Federal Reserve Bank. They've created a law system in all the countries. They've created duality of flags so that you enter into contracts without realizing them, so you lose all of the rights that are granted to you um, that should never be taken away from you, but you've given them up. They say voluntarily, and they make themselves feel better by saying, oh, you did it voluntarily, so it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not moral. But they tell themselves it's moral because they say you've done it voluntarily. Yeah. I'm pissed. I'm really pissed. <laughs> Sorry for that bad word, but but this is an attack, and uh, I mean I see that on all the, the people, uh, and I I, I really uh, uh, I mean it's time that the people wake up because if you don't do anything, it's just letting uh, uh, them do what they ever want to do. You know, I mean you're giving them the permission because uh, if there's no no people who are claim something uh, who say no 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 I don't want that and so they continue with that of course if, if you keep on watching your soap operas people I don't know it's a personal expression right now 
but if, if you're still just only watching the things and okay a cam trail but what can I do no you can do something just go on the streets or just uh, 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 open your mouth or tell that the people maybe someone else will wake up if you don't uh, have, have the balls to uh, to do any uh, something I mean think on your children uh, think, uh, think, uh, think of your girlfriend uh, boyfriend uh, husband uh, wife whatever future generation I mean now we are in, the, in, the, in a special time where we uh, we can give that information but if we don't do anything we are one day Russ and I we are dead and if there's nobody talking uh, talking about that that all that thing that will happen and nobody else will know it so it's it's we are on the right time to do something people please wake up okay continue wow. yeah yeah you're absolutely right in yeah. fact right now I'm gonna see if I can share my screen here in a second okay I think I'll be able to okay. um, but let me show you what they're teaching your children because they're trying to teach your children right now that these trails are normal. Um, that you're seeing yeah. are normal and they're harmless water vapor. Yeah. They're yeah. trying to teach your children. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I even I see that in the, in the movies. I mean, uh, even in digital movies like uh, I think Cars from 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 Disney. You know, uh, they 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 they're putting cameras there. I mean, uh, on purpose. It's not just. Uh, uh, I mean, when you make a normal movie, a documentary, and maybe there appears one uh, uh, at the sky, okay. But they're putting those things right there because they want that the people see that and that they think it's normal, you know. So I mean, uh, it's all a plan. I mean, uh, many people know about it, even Hollywood, I think. So because there are so many messages in, in, the, in the new movies, and okay, I see your your screen here. Yeah, let me. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, let. Yeah, let me show the. Um, let me show everyone who's watching what they're teaching their children here. Okay. Here's what they're. Here's what they're teaching your children. Um. Here's a. Here's a picture of a young man here who's in school. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he's. He's being showed the NASA cloud chart. And what this, what this NASA cloud chart says, and I, I can probably pull up a picture of that in a minute, the chart itself, but you can see the chart down here in the lower right. Yeah. This chart is teaching this child, and this is an American school here, mm -hmm. that those trails coming out of jets, they form clouds, and those clouds are perfectly normal, natural, and harmless clouds. And the reason they're teaching your child this is because when your child grows up, they want that child to never fight against chemtrails or geoengineering. They want that child to, to never think twice about those clouds. Say, oh yeah, those are just clouds we learned about in school. Mm -hmm. um, aren't, they, aren't they pretty? Aren't they nice? I'm not going to worry about them. And so that child can be kept continuously sick or at least brainwashed. Not in perfect health. Right. Uh, dumbed down through the chemicals, that child can be, be uh, uh, be controlled through the dumbing down use mm -hmm. of chemicals in the air without them even having to have amalgams they can remove amalgams and they can remove fluoride from water and say aren't we wonderful <laughs> look how great we are we finally came around your governments are looking out for you while in this and while in the meantime I want your children to accept these chemicals as as normal and here's let me give you let me show you another thing too here Here's a page. If you go to globalskywatch.com, you can click on this link at the top called Special Features. Um, and when you do that, go down to a link called um, Textbook Dis Textbook D Info Weather Weather Studies. D Info stands for Disinformation. So you click on that link, and it brings you to this page. Here's that same picture of the child reading the uh, looking at that uh, lying NASA cloud chart, which is an absolute lie. Here's a nice uh, quote. From um, from a guy who uh, from Fred, Frederick Henry Osborne, uh, and I'll read that to you in a second. Here's a nice graphic that shows what's going on in the school system right now. Is there? Um, let me adjust this and zoom in on it a little bit so uh, so everybody can see it. This is a nice nice graphic that depicts the fact that um, children are being taught 
you know, here, here's a child who hasn't been molded yet by the school system who's saying these are chemical trails. And here's a teacher who's teaching this child and showing the child that, uh, oh, it's not geoengineering because the teacher believes it's contrails. And now these children who have been conditioned over here on the right believe that they are condensation trails. Condensation meaning harmless water vapor. So let's go down and, and we'll look at another. Here's the book I'm talking about. This is called Weather Studies. This is a textbook that's being used in, uh, in the school system. Uh, let me center that a little bit better here. Okay, there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a page from it. Here's another page. See those, that picture? This is right out of the school textbook. See those, uh, those trails up there? Oh, They're teaching, those are, those are <laughs> that's right, that aluminum the, barium. Uh -huh. They have that in the schools right now. This is a, yep, this is a school textbook right here. This is a, this is a uh -huh. page, this is scanned. <laughs> Incredible. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Incredible. Here's another page, here's an, it is. Now, we go down and look at a quote, because we have a quote. We have a chapter from this textbook on our, uh -huh. on our site. Um, Let's just take a look at what they say real quick a little bit. Here we go. Let me zoom in on that. I don't know. You probably won't be able to read that on the... On, uh, maybe you can. I don't know. But, but it helps a lot. Uh, from, here's what it says. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I said yeah, here's what it says. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I just told uh, told the, the audience who are uh, watching this. Uh, it's a wonderful way here with uh, sharing your screen because uh, after that live stream, I will upload that to YouTube. So... Uh, uh, people who cannot follow that that fast, you know, they they always they can uh, return a little bit the the, the video and uh, follow your uh, your guide, you know. I mean, uh, they they can do that by themselves, so they can that really open in their own computer and and watch uh, the same. And uh, yeah, it's a w wonderful way with with that uvu that we can share the the screen and whatever. Okay, now uh, continue, please. Excellent. Yeah, uh, we will have to give your YouTube channel so people can make sure and find it. Yeah, yeah, it's um, uh, YouTube. Uh, um, how you say diagonal? Uh, uh, the, the username is lights out nine 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 nine, where I have uh, all those videos. Uh, all also the the past live streams are also on YouTube. So uh, it's, uh, lights out in English. Uh, uh, in English, lights out like uh, luces apagados in Espanol. Um, diagonal. I, I don't know how, how you say diagonal. Uh, this, uh, Como se llama usted? Uh huh. Bueno, that's uh, all. <laughs> okay, okay. It's great. That's See. all I know in Spanish. I learned that in high school. Okay. Como se llama usted? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Okay. No, it's a group. So, okay. so it's uh, called. It's called Project. Is it called Lights Out Nine 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 Nine? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I have a backup channel. The name is Project Lights Out. Uh, just in case if they uh, censor one day my. Uh, um, uh, YouTube channel I have uh, right now, which is lights out nine 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 nine. I mean, I put the nine 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 nine. I will tell it uh, 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 once, once and for all. It's not a diabolic number because people say ah, it's like six six six, but it's uh, four times nine. And I, I put that because uh, of my yearly events. Uh, I, I make them uh, always like uh, special dates. Like the last one is was twelve twelve twelve. You know, so uh, uh, when I started. Uh, thinking about uh, how, how to inform the people I wanted uh, uh, one date with, which is very easy to remember not not like uh, the earth hour where they also uh, invite people to uh, switch off the lights for some cause uh, which is I, I think uh, 27 of March or something like, like this it's, it's very hard to re remember uh, a date which is uh, uh, with mixed numbers so I, I choose that 9999 because my, my first YouTube channel that was Cancun Hans, but that got censor censored when I talked about the solar storms, uh, what they can cause and whatever. And uh, I also was talking about politics uh, attacking the government in a certain way, the, and not attack attacking uh, like uh, bad, but uh, uh, telling the truth, you know. And uh, I got uh, uh, or that that channel, that Cancun Hans channel, when I started uh, my whole project, was erased with, with more than 400 videos. So I started the second one, which is now Lights Out 9999. And my backup channel uh, uh, will be Project Lights Out. It's already created, no videos there, but uh, to continue just in case if they raise my uh, uh, um, 
channel I have right now. So uh, that's why it's the 9999. It's just that uh, for, for the trolls because they will say, ah, he's, he's Illuminati because he is using uh, numbers or whatever, you know. The people are sometimes uh, just attacking and uh, they don't like what you're doing. So uh, this video will be there. Uh, after that show, I will upload it also so, so people can watch it if they couldn't make it right now, uh, watching this uh, uh, in real time. And uh, our other videos are also on, on that uh, YouTube channel. So feel free to share people if you uh, uh, like some of those videos I upload. I also I uploaded some personal videos where, uh, from Mexico City where I filmed uh, the chemtrails here and everything. So there's a lot of information. And also check out uh, Russ Tanner's uh, uh, videos and uh, website. It's very, very informative. I, 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 I appreciate it really that, that you take your, your time, Russ, to uh, inform the, uh, the people. Because, uh, I mean, you don't charge for, for giving that information. I don't, I don't charge. We, we do that all, all, all because we want to help, not, 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 not because we want to get rich of that. We don't uh, ask for any money. You know, and that, that's, that's a wonderful way to, exactly. to get the truth out. Okay, now, now uh, continue, please. Exactly. That's right. I mean, I, I almost died in 2011 from a heart attack because uh, the barium that they were spraying lowered my potassium, and, it, and it, I'm sure it has done this in, uh, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of millions of people already. Yeah. Um, well, millions might be high. I don't know, but uh, it may not be high. But uh, uh, barium lowers potassium in humans and mammals, uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. and when that potassium gets too low, you'll have a heart attack. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. That's what happened to me, and they actually use barium to artificially induce heart attacks in, in laboratory animals. But getting back to this, uh -huh. this weather uh, studies book, this is uh, a oh, one, 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 one last word. Do you say uh, maybe it's a high uh, uh, sum uh, to mention a million people? I don't think so. I, I, I think it's uh, it's uh, even could be more. The thing is, uh, many people when they are dying, uh, they uh, diagnose maybe a heart attack, but. But they don't know uh, which uh, sickness caused that. So uh, I think there are really a lot of people dying around the planet, and they uh, they think it's in a natural way or because they are eating something bad. But uh, I, I think there are really uh, uh, more than millions millions of people who are dying. And maybe they they don't die just uh, from one day to the other, but uh, in a slowly way. You know, you get sick, you take medicine, so. Uh, uh, um, they they put that sickness sickness in a, uh, in another uh, like an excuse you know maybe uh, ah you have cancer but maybe even the cancer is caused by the government you know so so I, I really I think uh, the most people who are dying young uh, they are really getting killed by the government because it's not normal I mean uh, hundreds of years ago where uh, the te technology didn't exist people they they got very old even uh, my my grandfathers. Uh, my, my grandfather my grandmother they were more than 90 years old and healthy and now look at the, the people who are living on that planet they are sick even in a young age so there's really something bad going on here that's true and, and um, I, I agree that the number is huge I know many many people have died since chemtrails started mm -hmm. in fact in the first year that they started spraying our area I know more people who died I know more people who died in that first year than I know in the rest of my life combined and doubled. So um, a, a lot of people were dying. And also, you know, this stuff causes aneurysms, strokes, heart attacks, um, cancer. Mm -hmm. Plus there's HARP going on, which is a high frequency active auroral yeah. research project. Yeah. And uh, I hear the hum all the time, not, not literally all the time, but uh, probably three days a week, four days a week, there's a loud, low-frequency hum. And if that's being caused by electromagnetic waves, which I believe it is, you're, it's like we're living, we're living under power lines, mm -hmm. and that causes cancer. Mm -hmm. So how much more cancer is being induced, not just by all the metals, but now we've got all of this low-frequency radiation. And then you've got them installing smart meters, and you've got more high-frequency uh, yeah. Uh, radiation going on. Uh, just look outside. There, there are so many an antennas outside. You know the uh, transmission uh, towers, or I, I don't know. I don't know if, if they have a special name. Uh, in Spanish, we say antennas, 
uh, they're everywhere. I mean, uh, I, I never have seen so many uh, than uh, in our times right now. You know, I mean, uh, towers with with, with uh, dishes and and uh, I don't know what they're transmitting all. You know, so uh, they're, they're, they're really the yeah, it's growing. It's growing, and people are getting sicker and sicker. They they have. Uh, headaches they they get sick they, they buy medicines and slowly they, they they're dying maybe this is also what I think a, a kind of plan of the depo depopulation uh, depopulation because you cannot kill uh, the people from one day to the other but in a slowly way you don't get a, a, a clue you know you it's just like ah guess what my friend just died and uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm still okay, but maybe you, uh, the other friend dies in one year, you know, so uh, it's like a little bit covered up, so you you, you don't uh, suspect anything bad, but uh, maybe the, the reason that they want to do is because when, when, when people are also getting old, they want money, you know, I mean, uh, you get, uh, you have the right to get the retirement money, so they can save all that money, so uh, you, you just get rid of them. Uh, let the people work in Germany now uh, you can uh, get retired uh, my brother told me with 69 years in the past it was 65 so so you you will be a slave four years more for the government you know working your ass off and then what what, what are you doing with, with 70 years uh, uh, even from from working all the uh, those years uh, it's not good for for your health your old man at that age you know for uh, 79 uh, no 69 years old and then uh, maybe you have one two years more and then uh, that's it you know and, and they save a lot of money to uh, to to pay you until you're 90 years old like the people used to to, to get old in the past uh, so so people are dying always younger and younger the sport uh, uh, sportlers or how you say people who are working in in sport they don't they don't even use uh, alcohol or smoke like 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 I smoke and they are dying young. I mean, uh, uh, people are, are dying in any age right now. So there, there, there's really something bad going on. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Continue. With yeah. Yeah. With, uh, okay. Well, here's what they're teaching your children. This is right out of okay. the textbook, um, chapter seven: clouds, precip uh, precipitation, and weather radar. Here's the. Let me read the first paragraph to yeah. everybody, so you understand. This is what they're teaching your children. This is an absolute lie. They are teaching your children that. This wonderful white powder is harmless water vapor when it's actually highly toxic metals that cause disease and death. Here's what the chapter says. Um, a familiar sight, oh, I keep getting some high frequency feedback or something, I'm not sure what, what that is, but hopefully that'll go away. Uh, a familiar sight in the daytime sky almost anywhere is contrails. Bright white streamers of ice crystals that form in the exhaust of jet aircraft. Contrails are modifying the cloud cover along heavily traveled air corridors between major urban areas with possible implications for weather and climate. According to some studies, contrails already cover about 5% of the sky in some portions of the eastern United States. A contrail, short for condensation trail, develops when a hot, humid air in jet engine exhaust mixes with cold, drier air at high altitudes. Turbulence in the exhaust causes the mixing. A similar process enables us to see our breath when we exhale on a cold winter day. For examples on this process, see the chapter's first essay, Clouds by Mixing. Okay, let me go back to my camera here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There we go. Yep. Um, okay, so in that, in that thing that I just read, um, we're telling children here that uh, these are harmless condensation trails. I have lived on military bases, um, had a uh, airborne ranger in my family, used to go watch him jump and drop zones. Um, I uh, have watched the sky since I was a kid. I've collected pictures of uh, aircraft, uh, had thousands of pictures collected when I was a kid. Um, always watch the sky. I uh, used to fly every year up the eastern seaboard and back. So used to spend three uh, weeks up in, uh, in New York State, uh, western New York State. I went. Uh, flown across the United States, driven across the United States, watched the sky constantly, uh, flown to Hawaii, uh, a few occasions went uh, uh, skiing in Colorado in Snowmass, which I love. Uh, only been a couple times, but it's a beautiful place to go snow skiing. Um, and I have never, 
in all of the sky watching and all the pictures I've collected in living on military bases, uh, living in one of the busiest airspaces in the world. I grew up near Tampa, Florida. I've uh, been to uh, Tampa Airport many times. It's one of the best airports in the world. I've never, ever seen or even seen a picture of a trail coming out of a jet engine. Never. Not one time. If I ever had seen a trail coming out of a jet engine, I would have wondered what was wrong. I would have thought that it was on fire and there was smoke coming out because jet engines do not produce trails. And the conditions at which a jet engine may produce a trail could only possibly exist at high altitudes, and only then they are so rare that most people will never see one in their lives. Now, there are some people who have seen jet engines, uh, I mean, have seen trails come out of jet engines uh, back in the 80s and the 90s. I've spoken to some of them. Once in a while, they'd see it happen. And I believe that this is early testing. In order for this chemtrail geoengineering project go full swing like it is right now to the point where it affects the entire globe, they had to develop tanks, they had to develop pumps, they had to develop the, the substances that were going to be pumped. I wonder if muting your microphone might get rid of all that squeaking. Do you hear all that, Hans? Uh, I think it's here in the background because the, the neighbors, I told you the neighbors, they uh, make loud music. Uh, the day, but I will I will put my microphone on mute. Tell me if if it's better now. I will put a mute, mute now. Okay. There we go. Now it's all nice okay. and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, anyway, so I have never seen a trail come out of jet. I what, in order to develop these, they have to develop the tanks, the pumps, the piping, the seals ways to load them on the aircraft they have to have rails they have to be able to transport the tanks of course they have to manufacture them transport them they have to be able to install them and uninstall them from the jets they have to develop the powders that are going to be sprayed the pumps that will pump the powders the dispersion units that will disperse the powders they have to uh, experiment for decades on how when they disperse the powders how long does it take for them to reach the ground how much of a wide area do they cover how much intensity can we get per square foot of coverage what are the effects of these powders? Can we make them small enough so they're not detectable, um, or at least minimalistically detectable by city uh, air pollution detection equipment, which the nanoparticles go right through those filters for the most part, which is why your typical HEPA filter is useless against chemtrails. Um, so this stuff takes decades to develop. So the research and development and the testing has must have been going on for at least 30 years. We know, we know though, that in Vietnam they were spraying. I mean, you, there's video. You can go on YouTube and see video of, of jets spraying uh, trails uh, over areas where they uh, defoiled the land and they sprayed to kill people. Um, and so the technology has been around for a long time. Um, the jet engines don't produce trails. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. I've never seen it. The research that I've done shows that it doesn't happen. If you look at the the consistency of the air conditions at high altitudes. Uh, there's a lot of consistency there. The jet engines all use the same principles. When a jet engine is developed, like a Pratt & Whitney jet engine or a GE jet engine or a Rolls-Royce jet engines, they use the same principles and they're in operation for years. You might have a, a, you know, a, a GE jet engine that's used for 30, 40 years, the same model engine. And these things, you know, they don't produce trails. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, it's so rare that, that I've never seen one. That's how rare it is because the conditions just don't exist for that. And, of course, the shills will try to get on and the trolls will try to say, well, you know, when you burn a fossil fuel, it creates water. Well, in a perfect oxygen environment, maybe that's true, but we don't live in a perfect oxygen environment. Um, the amount of water vapor that's coming out of a jet engine is so small in, in relation to the volume of air that's being moved that it's irrelevant. You don't see it. And that's why if you go to an airport... Uh, there's not water all over the runway coming from water coming out of the engines. Why aren't the runways all wet? Why don't you have that moisture? Um, why don't you see the vapor trails coming out of the engines when they're taking off? You don't. What you see when you see a jet taking off is black soot, which is what happens when you burn jet fuel, which is, which is, a, which is basically kerosene, which is very closely related to kerosene, uh, commercial jet fuel. Exactly. You'll see this black soot coming out. You don't see ice crystals. You don't see water coming out because the volume of air is much too large versus the amount of water that's produced. So don't let these people lie to you. Don't let these people lie to your children because the ultimate re resulting of this is death. 
and some of these people in these high positions, um, not at the very, very highest positions, because I think people who are at the highest positions know exactly what they're doing, and they're doing it fully intentionally. But the people who are a uh, level or two levels below them have been told that this is saving the planet, this is for the benefit of mankind, uh, there is overpopulation. If we don't you know, reduce population, we're going to uh, all die. Uh, none of that is true. I do not believe that is true at all. We are not running out of resources. When I was in elementary school, we were told that an ice age was coming, and then you have Al Gore telling us that we have global warming hmm. that's going to destroy the world. While the warming that's taking place in the very strange weather is not natural that's taking place today. Okay, the weather we see taking place today is a result of massive hundreds or, or, or tens of tons, or, uh, tens of millions of tons of, of uh, condensation nuclei being dropped into the atmosphere. And um, we have had weather control technology that was developed in the 60s in the United States by the military. It was perfected in the 70s. And if all of this is true and you want to think your government is looking out for you, and I'm not anti-government. I'm not anti-government. I'm anti-corruption. Government is useful and has its purpose and its place. should be limited, small, but it has its purpose and its place. It needs to be well-regulated and small and, and perform the, the specific purposes that are set out, laid out in the Constitution, which is a good document that, that has uh, done things that no document in history has ever been able to do. Um, uh, the problem that we have is um, if we have had these weather control technologies, I'm not, well, I was saying, I'm not against government, I'm against corruption. I'm against, it's the corruption. It is the corruption that is the problem. Not government, it's the corruption. Yes, government is the entity that has become corrupt, but it's a relatively few people at the top. Of course, government is way, way over, uh, over bloated, way bigger than it should be, has much more power than it should. But getting back on track, um, We've had weather control technology that was perfected in the mid, uh, early to mid-70s. With that in mind, why are we having hurricanes? Why do we have Katrina? We could steer hurricanes. We could diffuse hurricanes. We could diffuse storms. We could cloud seed to make rain where we need it. We could diffuse clouds to remove rain where we didn't want it. Why are we having floods? Why are we having people die in the Midwest? Why are we having drought uh, out west? Why are we having uh, freak snowstorms? Why are we having ice nucleation at 40, 50 degrees? Ice is forming and we're having hail. Why is this happening? Because of these exotic chemicals and uh, particulates being used in the sky. Why are people dying because of weather? When we live in an age when weather control has been perfected, we shouldn't have this anymore. It shouldn't happen. Uh, that only means one thing. If you, if you use your logical mind, it only means one thing. It's intentional. E these, these storms are either naturally forming and they're doing nothing about them, or they're being intentionally formed. And if you understand the combination of ionizing the atmosphere with uh, small particulate powders, which we have a whistleblower who's come out who has seen, who had the MSDS and seen barium and aluminum powders in canisters being brought onto Air Force bases. Okay? We have the whistleblower. Of course, many whistleblowers, many people are afraid to come out because they put their lives in danger when they do because this is the largest crime against humanity in human history and people are afraid to come out, understandably so. Nevertheless, a few have come out. So um, when we uh, spray these particulates in the atmosphere, we not only are killing people because they're toxic to people, um, we are changing the weather. We have technology showing that when you ionize the atmosphere with these small particles and you combine that with HARP technology, the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Project, what you end up with is the ability to steer the jet stream, to induce earthquakes, and to control weather. Okay, this is not me saying this. This comes right from their own literature and right from their own patents. And there are experts in these fields who have come out and said this is exactly what this, these technologies uh, can be used for. They were developed originally, according to the patents, for steering jet streams, inducing earthquakes, and controlling weather. Not me saying this. This is right from the paperwork. So, people, you know, people who are not involved, who are not doing anything in this, need to wake up and get involved because you may say right now, I don't feel the health effects of it. Now, I am. I smell and taste it. I have chronic inflammation every day. I suffer every day of my life since 2005, since this criminal spraying started. Okay? But if you're not suffering, don't be so selfish and don't be so um, 
disconnected from everyone else. Don't do it because it's going to affect you. Even if you are selfish, even if you can't bring yourself to do something for to protect the world, to protect animals, to protect nature, to protect agriculture, even if you can't bring yourself to do that for whatever reason, you don't like to do things like that, if, if you're purely selfish and you want to only act on your own behalf, then at the very least realize this, that this stuff is affecting you. It has already shortened your lifespan. Scientifically, and this is established science, anyone will tell you that the more particulates you breathe and the smaller those particulates, the shorter your lifespan. So your lifespan has already probably lost many years and you will come down before too long with some kind of chronic degenerative disease and your doctor will never make the connection between chemtrails because he doesn't even know they're spraying and medical schools have been uh, systematically designed the medical education so that doctors do not understand unless you go to a toxicologist which most people don't your general doctor your general practitioner or doctor will never put the pieces together of toxic metals with chronic disease that does not happen very often at all and I have talked and had contact with countless people over the years who've gone to doctors for years nothing against doctors I mean modern medicine can do amazing things orthopedic surgery is great organ transplants are, modern medicine is way overpriced but it does wonderful things when it comes to those types of technologies but when it comes to your day-to-day -day disease uh, cures or prevention it is not working uh, and your doctor will never make that connection so even if you're just acting on a purely selfish motive it has already affected your life, it's already shorted your, shortened your lifespan, and you will come down with a chronic degenerative disease because you're being dosed with alcohol, not alcohol, with aluminum, with barium, with strontium, I believe mercury, I believe molds um, and funguses, and other things that suppress your immune system. We know barium and aluminum are immune suppressants. Mercury is immune suppressant. The problem is, is that you want to trust your government, and you want to say, well, everything's okay. And again, it's not paranoia has nothing to do with being afraid in fact it takes a lot of courage to come out to to speak publicly about this so when people call me paranoid which doesn't happen much anymore but when it does uh, it's just laughable because the real people who are paranoid are the people who are too afraid to speak or they're too afraid of what other people will say so they don't want to come out and say I believe that they're really spraying they don't want to tell their friends that because they're so afraid of what their friends will think of them you know and it's like we got to get over that we've got to grow past that we've got to put truth above other things we've got to put truth above our own personal feelings because when we put our feelings above truth then we don't solve problems and when we don't solve problems life gets horrible people die governments become corrupt we have to have a very high regard for truth regardless of how we feel about these situations um, so there you have it Hans uh, that's that's my spiel about uh, about how people really need to get involved about uh, in, uh, in in helping us put an end to this. Don't sit on the sidelines and do do nothing. We need we need to have people involved. Not anti-government. Not paranoid. It takes a lot of courage to come out and speak publicly publicly about this stuff. People who who do expose the conspiracies. And, you know, I know you know mainstream media says, "Oh, conspiracy theorists." Let me tell you something. I had meetings in my house years ago. Um, that used to have, we used to have lectures from uh, very, very intelligent people that would expose this information. And what I discovered immediately after my first meeting, when I had my second meeting, none of the people who attended the first meeting came back to the second meeting. None of them came back. And so I went to those people and I said, no judgment, but please tell me what we're doing wrong that made you not come back. Was it boring? Was it not believable? I mean, he presented the evidence for you. It was all documented. You know, what is it? What is the problem? And you know what those people told me? It's too scary. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, is the mainstream media likes to call people who expose conspiratorial corruption, conspiracy theorists, and say that they're paranoid. It's really the other way around. The people who are bold enough to expose conspiracies and corruption are courageous people who are willing to speak out despite the consequences, if there are any. The consequences are really good because we can reverse the situation, but there's this perceived fear. They're brave people. The people who are afraid to speak out, the people who don't speak out, 
are afraid of what their friends think. They don't they, they don't want to face the information because it's too scary. And we need to grow up. We need to become brave because if you don't have courage, you don't have freedom. You cannot have freedom where there is no courage. And that's why we're headed in the direction we are today. That's why we're losing our freedoms is because people have become so afraid um, that the, the general public will not stand up or hasn't stood up the way that they should have to, to stop the tyranny and the corruption that's going on. And that tyranny and corruption is not going to get better. It's only getting worse. And I will add this one thing, too, is that mercury, which has been one of the favorite devices used by medicine, uh, it's been promoted by the Institutes of Medicine and those who write grants for research. That's why they pulled Haley's uh, mercury research. Why did they do everything to keep mercury in fillings, mercury in vaccines, when you don't need it in vaccines? You don't need mercury in vaccines. There's other preservatives that can be used that are a billion times safer than mercury. Uh, you don't need it in fillings. You don't need it in cosmetics. You don't need it in tattoos. It doesn't have to be in coal-burning power plants. You can burn coal, even though I know coal destroys the earth and there's problems with coal. But even if you have to burn coal, you can put scrubbers on the smokestacks and remove 99.9% .9 of the mercury or more. But what you find is that the governments have fought that because they say, oh, it's going to raise electricity 1%. Really? 1%. That's the maximum. 1%. Your electric bill goes up 1%. But guess what? You're not putting literally two to three to 400 pounds, pounds of mercury. And it only takes micrograms to destroy your health. We're talking about pounds per year, hundreds of pounds per year into the atmosphere. So the cost in the medical system is without exaggeration, tens of thousands of times greater, if not 100,000 times greater than the cost to put scrubbers on the smokestacks. But yet the government has fought that. And everything they can do through law to keep the scrubbers out. Why do they love mercury so much? I'll tell you why. Here's what I'm building up to. It's the fear drug. Mercury not only causes 200, according to Dr. Huggins, 200 of the most common diseases today. In fact, the set of diseases you see today exist in large part because of mercury's use in medicine, dentistry, vaccines, so on and so forth. Medicine, uh, mercury's just been pushed on people from every direction, and the government has done everything that they can to keep it there as long as possible. Why? Because mercury is the fear drug. It makes you afraid. It makes you panicky. It can make you depressed. It can make you... Um, make you many things it has profound effects on you emotionally but the most profound central emotional effect is fear and guess what if you want control of a country the only way to maintain that control in a tyrannical way if you were a good person and you control things properly you wouldn't need mercury you wouldn't need to oppress the public but if you want more power and you want to take the rights away from people, and you want to take the land away from people, and you want to take the money away from people, the only way you can do it is you have to keep the people in fear. And mercury is the fear-inducing drug. Nothing does it better. Wow. Well, wow, incredible, yeah. I mean, uh, this is a, a big reason that they, they're spraying all this shit in our, in our skies. And uh, you're really right. I mean, I... I personally, I mean, I, I am publishing all the things on my Facebook wall, for example, we are making the videos and I see uh, uh, when I uh, uh, talk to the neighbors, to some friends, even if if they uh, listen what I'm saying, you know, say, ah, what, what is this? Look at the sky and they say, ah, where? Is there a UFO or something? No, 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 no. Look at that big line here, at that trail, you know, and they say, yeah, but it's normal. It's just a plane. And then I tell them. Uh, no, 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 it's not that normal like you think and I explain them about everything they are the fear they, that they, they try to change the topic talk about football talk about girls or whatever, you know uh, because they uh, I, I see that they have fear. I see that they, uh, when, when you tell something to people and, and just observe the face the expressions and they they really they have the that face of fear They don't admit it of course because they, they, they don't want that, uh, they look like uh, 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 weak, you know, 
but uh, I really can see that and uh, I mean it, it's also I, I see that on the live stream uh, sometimes people are showing up they, they, they want to uh, see what we are talking you know there's a, a, a counter where you can see how many people are, are joining and we are up sometimes uh, uh, 10 15 20 and then uh, uh, at the moment where when you say uh, exactly those kind of things people are going away now we have just seven watching the, there was a moment I had uh, 20 then uh, yeah I mean uh, uh, they really they they think oh my god no 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 I don't want to hear that you know but they have to hear that I mean they're killing you this this is this is the thing that the people they 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 have to recognize I mean it's like when there's a war you, you cannot just close the door and, and keep on watching TV I mean <laughs> the outside they're killers you know and they're they're really uh, 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 there I mean uh, they're up up maybe j right now there, there's someone spraying at you and uh, uh, making sick your family I mean what what's up with you people I mean the, uh, what would you do if, if you go with your uh, with your uh, son or daughter in the street and someone is is uh, hitting your your your, uh, your child I mean you would defend the, the child or, or you would just say okay stay there le, le, uh, uh, you will get beaten up and meanwhile I watch my soap opera you know I mean this is not even logic people they have to uh, yeah to do something I mean, we, uh, just watching us is like being part of it and uh, giving them the permission that they can finish their uh, aims you know I mean this is <laughs> my god I mean I'm awake and, and uh, I don't have any fear at all even if they uh, will attack me or or insult me I don't care I mean this uh, I'm defending my life and people should have that uh, balls to defend their lives and the lives of their families of their friends and whatever because maybe they don't die right now but they're already uh, infected and, and getting more sick and more sick and one day they will die and I mean this is, you have to have uh, some conscience you know conciencia in espanol uh, because it's it's really an attack of 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 yeah of the whole humanity and this, we, we cannot let that happen that's that's yeah that's some of my words that the people really they i mean in the past in mexico mexico was so very uh, uh, famous because of the revolutions you know the zapata and uh, uh, all those, those famous people and uh, the mexican uh, uh, you know if you research in the history even mexico wa was like uh, 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 yeah don't touch me and uh, you will see I will hit you whatever you know and now it's like no 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 I mean what what's happened with the people I'm now in today's 7th of July and 13th of July I will be exactly 20 years in Mexico and I have seen those changes when I arrived here the people were very different and now that the people are separated in their houses they don't have any time to talk uh, uh not that much reunions between friends and everything so i mean uh, there's really a change happening and that's not normal because hundreds of years it was always good and the people were strong and everything and now they're so weak so controlled i mean there's really kind of mind control involved here too you know and brainwashing and just consuming and buying stuff what they are seeing in, in, uh, in the tv commercials and I mean if you continue living like, like this we are just living here on the planet to walk by and die and that's that's it you know but you don't have you don't enjoy your life anymore because you're sick you you have to stay then at home because uh, if you're sick you you, you 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 cannot go dancing or enjoying being outside and I mean it's up to us all the people who are watching this watch it again share that uh, video when it's on, on YouTube now it's still live but when it's on YouTube share that because this is a valid information and uh, yeah we have to uh, I mean if people say okay I cannot do it I'm, I'm just uh, that small here on that planet uh, what what can I do okay if you don't have that balls but maybe uh, your friend has it maybe he say okay thanks that uh, that you shared that that link of, of course I, I don't like that you know and I will take care even of you and, and, and help you with that share it if, if you don't want to uh, be active like we like Russ for example Sylvain and uh, all those other truth fighters like Roxy Lopez who uh, does a great job also giving uh, so uh, many information 
and uh, I mean if you don't want to do it but help at least to share I mean uh, nothing happens just a click with your mouse it's uh, like one to three seconds what it takes to share that on your wall and that that's it or talk about that with, with some friends and maybe they are doing that I mean there's still hope about but we really need to be in this together. The union uh, makes us strong. And what the, this is what the government is doing uh, to separate each other, to uh, lose that power because uh, then they will win. I mean, it's, it's just a question of time. And when Russ and I, when, when we are uh, history, when uh, let's say in 20 years or whatever, I don't know how, how many years we still have here on that planet, but when those people like Russ and me are not more anymore on that planet, then who will tell about that, talk about that? Everything will disappear and all the people will just learn, like the, the books, uh, which are now uh, at schools talking about those chemtrails, that they're not chemtrails and everything. So everybody will just believe what the government says and uh, yeah, and then we, the planet is, is lost, you know. So there's just control and, and slavery again here. So it's it's up to us to act right now. Okay, Russ, uh, continue talk, talking. I'm <laughs> horrible. Well, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, um, this we're living in a time right now where the so-called elites, those people who are in power, who have taken over these governments. Um, you know, look for that yellow fringe flag I talked about earlier. Um, these people are making their move right now. What what they're doing right now, they have been planning for hundreds of years. Okay, for for two hundred years at least. Some people would say uh, they've known about that this would happen for centuries, but uh, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is is that you're living in the time when they're actually making their move right now. They're making very bold moves. They're changing laws. They're accumulating uh, military hardware and they're spraying poison in the air around the entire uh, globe and as someone who can smell and taste it and I don't smell and taste it just a little bit it is uh, it is overwhelming to me in fact the whole right now my sinuses are almost closed uh, swollen shut and this isn't even a hard spraying this is an average afternoon of spraying um, but I can taste it every breath I take in when I pass air over my tongue I taste that uh, right now they're spraying a type that actually tastes like a combination of metal and um, has a bitter like a pharmaceutical type like a like a taste almost like a sleeping pill and every breath I take in that's what I taste on my tongue never before in my life have I ever experienced anything like this um, I know what, in, in growing up with a sensitive sense of taste and smell, I know what the seashore smells like. I live three uh, three miles from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that's where I grew up. Um, I lived there until about 2003. I lived in uh, Port Ritchie, Florida, which was uh, just, I lived about three miles from the Gulf Coast. Used to go boating. I had a small boat uh, and take friends out and we'd have fun on the weekends. Um, I know the sense of the ocean <clears throat> when you come towards the shore there's different scents when there's algae around there's different scents when there's fish around if they're well dead fish of course there's scents and everybody smells that kind of stuff um, and those are very strong odors but what people don't realize is um, is when you grow up with a sensitive sense of taste and smell uh, you you are able to observe things because the sense of taste and smell is an observation it's one of your five senses by which you can observe the world. And, um, and being very sensitive this way, I am absolutely obligated to tell everyone that that this stuff that is in the air that's being dropped from these jets coincides with the dropping. You know, in the beginning when they started spraying, they were spraying, uh, when I first experienced this in 2005, uh, they started spraying at very low altitudes. and it took only about 30 minutes, plus or minus 10 minutes, for that stuff to reach the ground. Because the air would be completely clear. It's not like it is today, where the air is in the middle, and then at night they go up and keep it at that level, um, because they're spraying so often, and because they, they've saturated the air. In the beginning, they would come and spray at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I 
figured that maybe that was because it's near rush hour and it will expose the maximum number of people. I, I thought that might that might be the reason. But uh, that was one of their spray times, was 3 o'clock in the afternoon every day. They come, crisscross, cover the sky. And once they started that, once they made that pass over where I over my house, um, it was about 30 minutes, to give or take, um, in, a, in, a, in that smell and taste of that metal and that chemical would, have, would become overwhelming in a period of about two minutes. It went from perfectly clear air, and in a two-minute period, it was at its maximum intensity. So it got uh, intense very quickly, and then they would spray for a couple hours, and that intensity just maintained. And then after they left, they were all of a sudden, all the jets would just fly off and stop crisscrossing. They would leave. And all of that stuff would dissipate, and it would take a couple hours, and then the air would clear up slowly. So if you if you graph the intensity versus time, the intensity went up very sharply. Let me try to do it backwards because of the camera. <laughs> it would go up very sharply, and then it would decline slowly. I guess I need to do it this way. It would go up very very sharply and then decline slowly. And that's that still happens today. When a plume comes down on us, the intensity goes up very sharply and declines slowly. Now, it doesn't always happen that way because some of the plumes, they're spraying miles and miles off in the distance. And what happens with those plumes is as they come down, the edges become diffused. Okay, so that uh, when they first spray the plume, if you move 10 feet, you'll go from full intensity to clear air. Of course, really not clear air because there is no clear air today anymore, but for the sake of this demonstration. As the plume descends, that edge gets spread out. You know, it kind of mixes in with the surrounding air. So now, um, in order to get clear air, you have to go 100 feet out. And if you go back into where your first reference point is, the intensity decreases some because it's spreading out. So as this plume descends, if it descends quickly, so if it's sprayed lowly at a low altitude and descends quickly, then the intensity increases very fast, and then it actually decreases at a more quick rate. Maybe it takes, you know, 45 minutes or 35 minutes to uh, to do, to uh, clear. However, there are plumes being sprayed miles away. They will hit the ground. They will come down to ground level, and at that point, they have already have some diffusion on their edges. Then they blow along the ground. They travel. They can't go down into the into the earth, obviously. So they travel along the ground and as they travel their edges become more and more diffused I can tell when we're being hit by a plume that landed miles away because instead of the intensity going up sharply and then down slowly it will go up a little more slowly you know it'll take a little more time to go up but it always takes less time to go up than it does to go down it seems because as you're in the midst of that plume it's still diffusing so when you when you are brought into the leading edge of that plume, the intensity rises at a, at, a, at a rate that is relatively quick. Then as the plume blows past you and has had time to diffuse um, and spread out, that other, the trailing edge of the plume has become more uh, diffused and dissolved. And I shouldn't say dissolved, but diffused and spread out so the, so the intensity declines. So as somebody who can smell and taste chemtrails, I have... Uh, especially in the beginning, I tracked the taste and smell very closely. I knew the schedules. And that's another thing that people need to know about to understand that this is intentional and to believe the fact that, that there are people who can actually smell and taste them. I've had a, uh, a lot of people contact me who say, I'm just like you. I can smell and taste them, and it's horrible. I can hardly stand it. It gives me a headache, makes my body hurt, gives me inflammation, gives me stomach issues, headache. Uh, fatigue, feels like I'm narcoleptic. Um, people have said this to me. A lot of people contacted me who can smell and taste it. These are the canaries in the coal mine, and people really need to listen to, the, to, to these people and listen to what I'm saying and trying to give you the truth about how this, uh, these plumes really work. For me, when they... Um, I'll also add this, is that there are many different kinds of plumes. Not many. I, I've detected eight types now. Uh, added a new type recently in the last uh, year there's been another one that actually smells kind of like burnt it's like a cross between burnt rubber and a wet dog uh, that's my best description of it some of these descriptions are very hard because there's nothing to compare it to but 
Uh, some of the chemtrail types that I've, that I've detected, I've named them according to their taste and smell. The very first one that I experienced on a daily basis in Jamestown was called the salt, I called it the salty metallic type because it was very salty on the tongue and it was also very metallic at the same time. And that particular type, uh, they did that for quite a while and it was on a schedule. You could tell what the schedule was. I could tell because I could smell and taste it. And uh, they would do it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then the air would clear. Then at um, 1 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, and 7. 1, 3, 5, and 7, we would have a massive plume fall on us. And it went this way for months. And the air would clear after 1 o'clock. You know, by, you know, quarter to 3, the air was, was clear. And then at 3 o'clock, and it was plus and minus you know, 15 or 20 minutes. Their schedules weren't super, super tight, but they were clearly scheduled. Three o'clock, another plume would hit us. So of course the plume was released half an hour earlier, plus or minus, um, and then that plume would go away. So that was the salty metallic type uh, during the daytime. At night, they soon added a type, uh, another type that um, had worse symptoms, had real severe symptoms that made my joints hurt tremendously, caused tremendous inflammation, very bad headache, very bad fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, and then as time went on, they started different types. In 2010, for instance, they started a new type that I call the uh, metallic chemical type. Uh, this tastes, uh, the best thing I can compare it to is it tastes like a combination of if you mixed motor oil with some kind of really bitter herb, you know, something very bitter plant with metal, um, that's my best description because there's nothing I've ever smelled or tasted that that is similar to it. It's like a combination of those three things. And the interesting thing about the metallic chemical type is it also has, I would say that there's a taste of, of the metal is almost like copper. It has a, it's not exactly like copper, but it's, it's similar to copper in its taste. And um, and the reason I know what copper tastes like is that if, if I've, I've been in rooms where they're cutting metals, like cutting aluminum or cutting copper pipe, and there's dust in the air, and you can taste it. You know, when they're doing that, I can taste the aluminum or taste that. And over the years, I've learned, or very quickly, I learned what those different metals taste like. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's what copper tastes like. So if you were to cut a copper pipe in the room, and I had my eyes closed, I could tell you what metal it was because I know what it tastes like. So the, chemical, the metallic chemical type causes tremendous inflammation. It really attacks the heart. It gives me tremendous heart inflammation, um, and that is the type that was being sprayed when I had my heart attack in 2011. That was the metallic chemical type, and that's the type that I've most often seen associated with ambulances. When they hit us really, really hard with the metallic chemical type, um, those are the times that I see ambulances going by, or if I'm in Bangor at the time, if I happen to be in town, I'll hear ambulances uh, almost always during well, I think every time, any time I've ever heard an ambulance, it was during a very heavy spray period. Uh, when the air was mild, I've never heard or seen an ambulance during that time. And the same thing happened in my heart attack in 2011. I was in the hospital for Monday night, had the heart attack about 12.30 on Monday night, or Sunday night. Stayed there Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and I left Thursday late in the afternoon. Tuesday night, they sprayed Bangor really hard. And that night, I had my friend bring in my, my wet mask that I was talking about earlier, right here. Uh, because it was horrible, I could not stand it. Okay, I had a test scheduled, and the nurse, it was a male nurse, was supposed to come and pick me up or get my test uh, so they could, because my test had a certain time window that you had to do the test within 45 minutes or else you had to start over because it wouldn't work. The nurse never showed up after the spraying started, real, real, real hard. This was on uh, Tuesday evening. I put my mask on because it was horrible. Nurse never showed up. A couple hours later, my IV, which they had an IV in me for the whole time, like I guess it was saline or something, um, and it had a machine that that meters the IV, you know, meters how much liquid is going in your arm, uh, uh, started going off because the IV ran dry and an alarm would go off every, you know, and so finally I had, I was in a, there was another guy in my room that was like scheduled for surgery the next day. So I'm looking at the control panel. Well, first I was like called the front desk and said, my IV's empty, there's alarm going off, is there anything somebody can do? And they're like, yep, we'll send somebody down. 
Nobody ever came. So I started looking at the, the control panel on the IV machine, and I saw a button called mute. So I hit the mute button, and the alarm went off. I was like, okay, great. There, at least I can shut the alarm off, so maybe I can get some sleep. Maybe I, the guy in the room here can get some sleep, and whatever. We can have a normal evening. Okay, this is, remember, this is a night during a really night of the most intense, very, very intense spring. Um, Fifteen minutes later, the alarm went back on. So I'm like uh, worried about this. So I immediately hit the mute button. Uh, 15 minutes later, went on. I think it was it was either 10 or 15 minutes, but it was right around there. So I kept having to hit the mute button all, all night. So I was up all night hitting the mute button every 10 or 15 minutes. Called the front desk again and it was nice. You know, I'm I, I don't think they do this intentionally. There's obviously some kind of problem. And they said they would send somebody down to fix the IV thing or whatever for me. Never came. Not until the next morning did my male nurse come back. He comes in and he's exhausted. He says, I am really sorry. We missed your test. And, you know, I know, I guess you called the front desk or something. He said, it has been crazy tonight. Respiratory, and he, this is his words, respiratory issues, heart issues. Everybody is sick. There are people getting sick. They had to call all the nurses to, to different floors. They had to call everybody in they could get in. So I don't know why this happens. Everybody, this happens at the same time. Everybody has all these issues. And so they had a scrambling, and I'm sorry, I couldn't come back and fix your IV, and I and you missed your test. I'm like, it's cool, it's all right. And I'm sitting there the whole time knowing the reason why this always happens at the same time, being someone who can smell and taste it, is because they nailed Bangor tonight. They sprayed the heck out of Bangor. This, this is what's making all these people sick. I wonder how many people died that night, how many heart attacks there were. How many aneurysms? How many strokes? You know? But nevertheless, it was related with this night of heavy spring. So I just, I wrote that whole story. If you go to globalskywatch.com and you uh, uh, click on my uh, personal chemtrail stories, my story, Russ Russ's story, you can click on that. And I've actually uh, wrote an article. I have a whole series of articles there. One of them is called My Chemtrail Heart Attack where I go into detail about all the stuff that happened that night and that week when I had the heart attack. And uh, incidentally, when they checked my heart, they did a uh, cardiac catheter catheterization. They did MRIs, I guess. They did uh, x-rays. Uh, they did um, imaging with sound. Um, it's escaping what that's called right now, like an e uh, electrocardiogram, maybe. Actually, I think that's the monitoring. I, I'm forgetting what it's called. Um, no problems with my heart. There was no functional problems. There was one problem. The only problem that they found is that my potassium was extremely low. The nurse came in uh, in the middle of my stay. I don't remember exactly when it was, but in the middle of the stay, she came in. She said, I've got some pills for you. There were four huge, what I call horse pills. They're just these really bigger than your average pills and I looked at him and said well uh, what is that because I don't like to take things if not necessary so I want to know what it is I'm not going to take something unless I know what it is I said so uh, what are those she was potassium she looked at me in the eyes and she goes your potassium is low because they had obviously checked my blood um, and the, the reason this heart attack was very helpful for me is because I did not know at that point, I did not know the relationship between barium and potassium. So I took the pills, the, they were potassium pills, I took the pills, and um, when I got out of the hospital, I started researching this and immediately found out that barium depletes, rapidly depletes potassium in humans, and when your potassium gets low enough, it can induce a heart attack. And there were no question, there were no problems with my heart, so it's obvious to me that this was all induced. This was an induced heart attack. And I uh, feel as though I almost died. Uh, may, I didn't go unconscious, but it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And I really did think I was going to die. The pain was uh, intense, very, very intense. And uh, my business partner, Laura, was driving me to the uh, hospital and we met the ambulance app actually at a relative's house um, so as she was driving me she was on the phone and they were telling me to cough because I that's supposed to help your heart keep going just keep coughing so I did that it was an immense pain 
thought I was going to die. If not, I thought I was going to get in a car accident because she was driving so fast. <laughs> I was like, one way or the other, it's not going to turn out good. Um, but all kidding aside, I just want people to know that, um, do you know somebody who had a heart attack, a stroke, an aneurysm, cancer? Uh, These all can be related. Uh, yeah, yeah, here in Mexico, there are many, many people uh, uh, in bad conditions, in health conditions. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the bad thing here is uh, they don't tell about, uh, talk about that, you know, but I see them sick, I see them coughing, I see them... Uh, uh, with the flu and uh, uh, yeah I mean they I think the most of the people they keep that by themselves they don't talk about it because they uh, I don't know maybe they're afraid or they don't have even uh, an answer why they are sick I mean we have the answer now because we, we see what's happening but the most of the people they they just blame it on uh, co the normal contamination because here for example Mexico uh, it's so crowded uh, we have so many cars and they say no it's because of the cars of the gasoline or whatever you know and uh, yeah so but but there are really many many people sick I mean here I, I told you uh, an hour ago or some, something like that that I, I can listen people puking in the morning not puking because of uh, drinking a, a lot of alcohol you know they, they're really sick coughing uh, uh, for a long time you know so I mean this is not normal for me I mean uh, uh, ah, it's normal. yeah no I hear the same thing I hear people coughing and you know you're out in public and people are sick they're talking you know if you're waiting in line somewhere they're talking about everybody that you know who's sick you know, and it, you know, this, you know, Hans. This reminds me of like the last scene of the movie Terminator. I don't know who who's ever seen that movie Terminator out there, but it's, mm -hmm. it, yeah. In that last scene, uh, Sarah Connor, the main character, is the only one in the world who knows that nuclear war is coming, and she drives off into the storm, the coming storm. I mean, it's a very symbolic uh, uh, scene, but. She's the only one in the world who knows what's coming. So the whole weight of the world is on her shoulders. And I feel like this all the time. Mm -hmm. I have people around me who are sick, and I tell them. I say, I want you to learn about these metals, what they're doing. And people are so slow. It takes them so long to grasp onto this, sometimes years. Um, and sometimes never, most times never, mm -hmm. uh, to, to grasp the idea that we're being sprayed with toxic metals. <laughs> this is what's happening. That's why it's showing up in our rainwater. We have rainwater tests. I have six times. I have a rainwater test here that shows uh, 600 milligrams. I hope it's not micrograms. I think it's milligrams. Either well, milligrams okay. or micrograms of, uh, uh, of, alu of aluminum in our rainwater, yeah. right? Um, 50 is the EPA maximum for safe drinking water. So we got six times the amount of aluminum that's allowed in drinking water in our rainwater. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing, yeah. There's something wrong here, you know. I mean, uh, the technology uh, uh, is there that you can analyze that and, and, and you have that there. I mean, uh, I believe it uh, when you say that. And uh, I mean, are the people so blind they don't see that is that is not right? I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Well, but what I also I think I mean we are s anyway we are separated because of the system you know so people are uh, not sharing too many private uh, stuff like talking about uh, guess what I'm sick I don't know why they they keep everything just private I mean it's time really time now that the people open their mouths that they are uh, talking talk about it because uh, it's it's not a natural effect here this is man made okay. I, I see your uh, screen here, parameter. Okay, I will put that. Uh, yeah. Big here, so all the people can watch that. Okay. Yeah, this is this is my rainwater test. It's actually 0.3 milligrams, so it's uh, one, two, it's 300 micrograms per liter. So it's 50 micrograms per liter is the EPA safe limit for aluminum in drinking water. Hmm. And right here we've got 0.3 milligrams per liter, which is the same as 300 micrograms per liter. So it's six times above the EPA maximum for, for, for safe uh, drinking water. Also, we've got arsenic. Um, we've got eight 
uh, micrograms per liter of arsenic. We've got 5.8 milligrams for barium. And I don't remember the maximums for barium. I'm going to have to look those up. But 5.8 micrograms per liter of barium. We've got one, two, we got 10 micrograms per liter of calcium, I mean cadmium. We've got, uh, let's see, one, two, 15 microgram, uh, micrograms per liter of chromium. Uh, one, two, three, 25 micrograms per liter of copper. And I was talking about that copper taste. Um, of course, I don't know what a lot of these metals taste like. I've never tasted barium or cadmium or, um, you know, some of these other metals. So I don't really know, but uh, that one chemtrail type I was talking about actually tastes like copper. We've got five uh, milligrams or micrograms per liter of lead. Uh, look at this. Okay, here we've got 0.2, okay, th this is measured in micrograms. We've got 0.2 micrograms per liter of mercury. Now, 0.3 micrograms per liter, uh, actually 0.3 um, uh, what is the unit of measurement? You know, they're, we're kind of under moderate chemtrail, so my memory is just shot here right now. But 0.3, I can't remember the units of measure, but 0.3 something per cubic meter, uh, micrograms per cubic meter, that's what it is. Uh, point, here we've got 2.2 micrograms per liter, okay? 0.3 micrograms per cubic meter of mercury is considered toxic. Uh, and here we are, we've got 0.2 micrograms per liter. So in, a, in, in one liter, we've got an almost considered toxic level. And a lot of people will argue that those EPA toxic levels um, are very high. They should be much lower than they are. Um, we've got one, two, we've got 10 uh, micrograms per liter of selenium. We've got one, two, we've got 15 micrograms per liter of silver. And then one, two, we've got 15 micrograms per liter of thallium. And let me see if there's anything else I've got. No, that's, that's it for that. That's my um, that's my rainwater test, and let me show you my uh, my dust test. This is interesting as well. Here we go. All right, here's the dust test. Let me zoom in on that properly here. Um, basically, this doesn't have a reference level, so uh, the data is not as useful. Um, as it would be if it had a, uh, uh, a unit of measurement per um, per unit of uh, volume or mass. But basically what we have here is we have a, uh, a cloth wipe that I collected. I actually took dust from one of my air purifiers and sent that, you know, put it in a bottle, and then they told me how much of each of these metals was in a bottle. It's a small, you know, one of these little small containers that they they sent me. It was a little tiny container with a little tiny lid on it. So I put the dust in there. Uh, there was 2,510 micrograms of aluminum. There was 19.6 micrograms of antimony, 4.6 micrograms of arsenic, 143 micrograms of barium, 0.5 micrograms of beryllium, 2.12 micrograms of cadmium, 12,000 milligrams of calcium, a whole bunch of calcium. What is all this calcium doing in the air? 20.1 micrograms of chromium, 3, uh, 3 micrograms of cobalt, 78.3 micrograms of copper, 3,860, I think that is, or 50, uh, of iron. And it's funny because there is a chemtrail type I call the iron type because it actually tastes like iron. Um, 80.2 micrograms of lead, uh, 2,320 of magnesium, 152 micrograms of manganese, which in high amounts actually can cause psychiatric issues. Um, manganese is essential in very, very small amounts, but in larger amounts, it becomes extremely toxic and can cause uh, psychiatric illnesses. Uh, very serious. 13.9 of nickel, 8,750 micrograms of potassium, uh, one of selenium, 1.58 micrograms of silver, 5,520 micrograms of sodium. Now, this, this brings me to the type of chemtrail that they don't spray much anymore, but at the time the sample was taken, they were still spraying it. I call it the, uh, the salty metallic type. So my question was, if, is this sodium part of a salt? Maybe it's a part of a salt compound that's, that was being sprayed in the salty metallic. 
uh, type chemtrail. 28.5 micrograms of strontium, which receives a lot of uh, lot of air time. Uh, 1.5 of um, thallium. There's a U in front of here. I'm not sure what the U means. Um, not sure what that means. Uh, vanadium, 4.89 micrograms, and zinc, 299. So um, this is what I collected from my air purifier. And what can be useful about this, because we don't have a ratio of, uh, of volume, of volume uh, to the total mass or total volume, um, at least we can see the relationship between the metals. We have very high aluminum, extremely high calcium, uh, high manganese, because manganese is very quite toxic in high amounts, high amounts of magnesium, sodium, and, you know, in iron. So those are some of the, the interesting things. But to me, one of the most interesting things is the aluminum. And let me, not to be outdone, but let me show you the rest. I had to do a separate test. Oh, there's, there, it's all blown up there. I should have shown you the big one. Here's the part that, to me, is, is possibly the most significant, really. Take a look at this. That little dust collection that I put in that little jar it was just a little bit I mean there's a ton of dust you know on my air filter you know the, the filter that I took this from was probably a maybe a foot and a half square something like that roughly and I mean the, the dust I took off was just a little little section just a, maybe a square inch or inch and a half I don't know but a relatively small part of that whole filter contained point three zero nine micrograms of mercury hmm. that is a lot of mercury that's a lot of mercury and we have to ask ourselves one thing that I I'm probably the only person who keeps bringing this up because I'm very familiar with mercury toxicity is where mercury is rising in soils across the United States there have been mainstream news articles about this um, not to mention aluminum and barium and other metals but mercury is one of the metals, and of course the government has blamed it on Chinese coal burning power plants, which has now been pretty much debunked. Uh, Gaussian, there's a, what they call a Gaussian distribution pattern of uh, when you have a coal burning power plant, the, uh, there's been studies and the mercury deposits in a teardrop shape around the power plant, and the longest part of the teardrop in relation to the smokestack, that is, um, from the smokestack to the longest, farthest away part of the of the teardrop deposition of, of mercury um, is downwind. Is you know prevailing downwind because there's prevailing wind directions all around the Earth depending on where you live, and that's usually 12 to 14 miles away. Okay, and on the uh, upwind side of the smokestack, it doesn't go as far, but you still do get some deposition because sometimes the there's wind turbulence and sometimes the wind does change direction but there have been studies that show that teardrop shape of mercury deposition around power plants and you can go online and find those uh, they took us some work to actually find those well how can you blame the mercury deposition on, on Chinese power plants California Air Quality Resources Board actually concluded doing a test on some of these these uh, soil bound metals not bound but so, uh, metals they were finding in soils that were not bound um, that uh, some of these metals were not coming these metals were not coming from Chinese power plants mm -hmm. so we have to ask ourselves where is all this mercury coming from and you remember I told you early on that metal mercury is really one of the elite's favorite metals I believe because it causes fear and when when your people are in fear it allows you to get away with a lot you know they won't they won't stand up they won't protest they won't go to court. It's too scary. It's too overwhelming. Mercury makes makes little issues seem like big issues. I used to be mercury toxic. I've worked with many people who are, and small problems like your computer, you know, locked up, make you feel like you want to freak out and make you feel like you can't handle it. It's too many things are going exactly. Um, but when you, you detox the mercury, I had my amalgam fillings taken out and I detoxed the mercury, had a complete recovery. In fact, I felt better than I ever had in my life by far. doesn't matter what happened. You can handle any problem. 
computer crashes, no big deal. You can handle it. Everything's fine. You're calm. You're focused. It completely changes your personality. You don't get panicky. You're not afraid. And all and so many of these emotions that are induced by mercury are related to fear. And so, hence, like I said earlier, mercury is called the fear drug. <clears throat> so, uh, it's also used in a couple relig religions like uh, Vodun, which is related to, to voodoo. A lot of people heard of voodoo. Uh, Vodun and Santeria. Um, in some, I'm not saying everybody in those religions use mercury, but it is most predominant in those religions where they will uh, put it maybe uh, in front of the entrances of your house or they'll make a circle and get inside of it or put a circle around the bathtub and soak in water or things like this. There's little ceremonial things that involve the use of mercury. Um, they use it also in other ceremonies where they'll uh, you know, burn fire and they'll put mercury in the fire, I believe is how it's done. I'd have to go, it's a long time since I studied that, but they do something like that with, with fire ceremonies. And the problem is when you burn mercury, it gives off tremendous amount of off-gassing. And what happens is when these people will burn this mercury, they'll end up having um, what they call, they think it's a spiritual experience. They start hallucinating, they start seeing things that they didn't see, they start acting strange, they roll their eyes in their head, they kind of go crazy, and they believe that this is a spiritual experience, when really this is a, a psychiatric reaction to massive mercury exposure. Um, and, and, and the thing about it, a lot of people, you have to understand there are different forms of mercury. When it's in a metallic state like that, it doesn't immediately get into your cells or your nervous system. Um, so it's not, it doesn't have the, top, the immediate toxicity. Of course, when you take it in over a period of time, it will become methylated um, and it will become, you know, either methyl mercury or uh, what they call um, like uh, uh, organic, uh, I think they call it inorganic mercury. And then it becomes much more bioavailable. It can pass through cell walls and it gets distributed. But there's a delay. So um, um, you can have some of the psychiatric effects of mercury when you have a large dose like that. Hence, these people experience all of these things. Um, but yet it doesn't kill you right off the bat. Uh, you know, in, in, in fact, you can be mercury toxic for decades and still live with all these symptoms, but still live. Um, but uh, anyway, so it's used in, in some of those types of ceremonies. But nevertheless, it's the fear drug. We're finding it in dust. We're finding it in rainwater. Um, I don't know anyone else who's, who has associated mercury with chemtrails. I do because I'm very familiar with the symptoms, and there are a couple chemtrail types. One of them is the acetone type, causes symptoms. Mercury symptoms are a subset of the acetone chemtrail type symptoms. In other words, if you listed, let's say, 20 common mercury symptoms, and there are many more than 20, but let's say there's 20, the, the symptoms of the acetone uh, chemtrail type include every one of those 20 symptoms and then some more. So what you say in that instance is you say mercury, uh, mercury symptoms are a subset of this larger set of acetone chemtrail type symptoms. There's also another chemtrail type that, that also is associated with mercury symptoms. But this was very surprising to me because the symptoms that I have, oh, sorry, I have a message coming here. But this is very, very significant. Um, uh, this is very significant because uh, mercury, um, uh, because it's the fear drug, you would think that they would want everybody exposed to mercury. And you've seen them, you've seen government uh, have have uh, um, policies, public policies that promote the use of mercury, that keep it. I mean, they did everything. They fought tooth and nail to keep it in vaccines, keep it in fillings, because it keeps people in fear, and fearful people are easy to control. So... Um, what was I getting to before? Um, uh, so here we are, we're having some chemtrails here, and it, it messes with my memory. But well, anyway, mercury. I'm I'm associating mercury with chemtrails. Mercury, uh, mercury. Oh, 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 oh. There are some symptoms that are specifically associated with mercury that I don't know that are associated with any other metal toxicity, and those symptoms are associated with those two chemtrail types so from someone who's been through mercury toxicity and fully recovered 
who studied mercury probably more than any other related health subject that I've studied. I feel very strongly, and, and having water tests and dust tests showing mercury in the rainwater and mercury in dust, and having the government uh, publish that mercury is being found in soils everywhere across the United States and not knowing where it's coming from. And of course, this all happened after 2005 when the broadest scale spraying started taking place. There was spraying going on decades before that, but in 2005 is when it seemed to just be fully implemented. It went 100%, whereas before the previous five years, it may have been 50% or 20%. In 2005 is when you have the largest number of people, and this is when I first saw it. Well, actually, I saw it in 2003 out west at uh, uh, Yosemite National Park, and I was shocked by all the trails, and I actually took pictures of them. But I never saw them again, and I didn't see them in Jamestown. They started on a daily basis in 2005. And so all of these things correlate with the appearance of mercury in soils, water tests, dust tests, the mercury symptoms, the spraying happened. It all correlates with each other. And uh, all those things together show me that uh, there's very there's, there's just no doubt in my mind that mercury is is one of the uh, the elements that they're they're uh, including in some of these trails. I probably better go before too long. I know we've been going for a while. I do have to <laughs> have a, quite a bit of quite a bit of work I have to do today. But I I did want to put some time in here and spend it with you. It's been a long time since we've done uh, since exactly. we chatted yes. together. Exactly. No, you're you're always welcome. And uh, you know, I was also close to give up. And I think now I I, uh, I know why because uh, that that happened uh, more or less at the time when when we got, uh, got spread. Maybe they wanted to brainwash me to to say yeah, let it go. And uh, I even I did a live stream of, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, some months ago, and I say, yeah, I cannot do more. Uh, uh, I think I better quit and I get a normal life here. But then uh, I, uh, you know, what, what helps me a lot is to also to meditate a little bit to think about what's happening. And then I, I came to the conclusion that if I resign, if I let it go, then uh, who will do it? I mean, there is still you there and maybe Sylvain and Roxy Lopez and uh, other thousands there but uh, I, I think I mean uh, at least I want to be a part of a change uh, uh, helping that people getting uh, awakened with this and uh, uh, so I'm back you know and uh, uh, now I, I'm doing live streams uh, as soon as, as possible as soon as I, I get people who want to talk there's also uh, uh, Max Bliss there I, I think you have talked with, 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 with Max Bliss before yeah Okay. Sure have. Yeah, I, uh, uh, he's also interested to, uh, to to make a live stream with, with me. I hope uh, that will be also very soon because uh, I think he's from uh, from England or Great Britain or something like that. Uh -huh. So yeah, he's. Uh, I think he lives in France, but he's uh, France, uh -huh. he's traveling. The has traveled the UK. He's lived, I think, in England, maybe in England, but I think he's from France. But I've chatted with him before. Uh, okay. Yeah, give him a message maybe uh, uh, because he knows you more than me. Uh, that uh, may maybe we can do one day uh, really uh, uh, how you say a group chat. Everybody there. Also, uh, people can call in. There is also uh, uh, that option. What I offer to the people that uh, it's not just writing in the chat box here on the live stream channel. They also can uh, talk to us and ask us or uh, yeah, be be part of the live stream. Uh, on video or audio at least and uh, yeah I will continue so I mean I'm I'm so happy to uh, to have a, uh, a new opportunity to talk to you thank you so much for your for your precious time and uh, it's it's excellent information I, lo I love that day today because it was so uh, good in the details and everything and now with the screen sharing we, we gave uh, uh, another um, good uh, option to that live stream not, not just showing our faces also showing evidences there and uh, as soon as we are finished it's uh, going to YouTube and then we we continue sharing I mean I will put it on my wall you for sure you will put it on your wall and I hope people also will share that it's, it's the least what they can do if they don't want to talk about it but I mean sharing is just a, is, is a click and don't have fear people Noth nothing will happen maybe the, some people uh, they will see you like uh, crazy or whatever 
I mean, I, I, I have that the, the same exper experience, but those people are then not your really friends. So it's, it's better get rid of those uh, uh, people who are not helping you because imagine if you're in, a, uh, in need and you need help, you, don't, you, you cannot count on them be, be, because if they're not even can share or something, uh, well, what can you expect of, of those friends, you know? And uh, yeah, and uh, people really, I mean, it's like more than two hours today again, and uh, for me, no problem. But I hope people have the, the time to watch that again or uh, watch it and uh, yeah, and learn something new, you know. So, thank you so so much for your time, and uh, yeah, you're welcome anytime, even if you want to talk something or if there's something very important, just inbox me and let's go live again. So no problem. I'm there to help. I'm count on me. I'm lights out is back. Hans is back, and yeah, <laughs> we are here. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I would love. I would love. Now you're gonna post this on your YouTube channel, which is uh, lights out nine 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 nine, right? Exactly. This is the channel I use right now, and uh, it's it's kind of funny because uh, that day uh, uh, we supposed to talk about peace, you know, because Sylvain wanted uh, uh, also to join and talk about peace but I mean it's it's connected because we don't have any peace as uh, uh, as long as they're spraying at us so I mean it's a perfect uh, uh, um, combination also to, to call it like uh, peace chemtrails uh, uh, in fact I will call that live stream peace chemtrails and uh, live event from that day and blah 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 so uh, also to uh, that people, I mean, there, there, there are many people they don't know about chemtrails, but they, they want peace, and when they see that, then they can really see, ah, okay, that's why we don't have peace, because the government is attack, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's attacking us, you know, and that's, yeah, we have to talk about that, I mean, as, as long as we, uh, we don't have the government on our side, that they're protecting us, we don't have peace, so it's time for peace, and it's time that, that chemtrails, for example, disappear, because they're just uh, harming people and uh, killing them a little bit, little, you know. Okay, yeah. I don't absolutely, know. <laughs> absolutely. Anything else? Well, thank you so much. Uh huh. Anything uh, uh, else? No, I. I you want to say? I just. <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, thank you so much for having me on, and and I look forward to doing it some more and talking. You know, we could do shows to help people detox. We could do uh, talks about. Um, you know very specific things too and even do shorter ones you know if we want to do one for just half an hour and talk about you know how do you detox chemtrails or something that might be that that way people have a, a great way they could go to your go to that i could you know link people to that video all the time and say hey if you want info on detox and chemtrails uh -huh. go look at uh, hans's video here he's we did an interview and he's got all that right there exactly um so yeah, yeah. thank you it's very good to talk to you again i i'm sorry that you um I know you had kind of dropped out of doing your streams for a while. At least I didn't see them. I'm sorry to hear that you were kind of down, uh, down and out a little bit there. But um, I'm glad you're back. If we don't, you know, if we don't uh, tell the public about these things, nobody else will. I, I think that, I think what we're going to learn is that the effect that we all are having individually is much larger than we realize. There are a lot of people who will watch your videos over time or see reposts of your videos or video mm -hmm. clips from your video uh, than we realize. They go much further than we realize that they yeah. go. So I, I, I'm glad you're back. Yeah, and I'm back. I, I, look, <laughs> I look forward to uh, uh, anytime you want to chat in the future, let me know or I'll email you and we'll make it happen. Yes, of course. Yeah, count on me. I'm, uh, I'm back and I'm, I'm, I'm stronger than before because I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have the balls and I, I, I don't care if, if people uh, see me like crazy or uh, why, why, why are you doing that, I don't care, I mean uh, this is what I'm living for, this is kind of my personal mission here on earth, uh, I don't want to die uh, uh, without letting something good uh, back on that planet, so, so maybe a thousand uh, years ahead, maybe people will watch our videos and maybe they're even in, on TV when they have still TV at that, that time and uh, they say that those guys, they were right. And maybe they even will put, uh, put us some stages, uh, how you say, like the Liberty stager, maybe a Russ Tenor stager, because uh, you knew a lot. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, everybody starts li like this. 
I don't I don't want to be famous, but at least I want I want to be part of a, a a change and everything. And it's like all those artists, famous artists, when they started uh, making changes in, in art for, for for example the painters they were poor they they did it uh, uh, in their houses uh, and uh, after hundreds of years now we can see them in the museums so yeah who, who knows how, how that's right you know you changes. know there, there's a study once there's a there's a study once and we discovered everybody dies uh -huh. and so this is what I like to tell people everybody dies but not everybody dies with honor so when you die when you're looking back on your life, make sure your life is the kind of life that you can be proud to have lived exactly. and that has helped other people exactly. and made the world better. Um, live your life every day that way and make it as good as it can be and as helpful to other people as it can be because that's that's one of the most important things is our relationships with each other. That's very, very important. Exactly. And don't die like a sheeple. <laughs> because. I don't want to do don't die for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we. Uh, you're a great guy, man. I, I really, I appreciate everything. I love you, man. You're excellent uh, uh, person, and uh, in your soul and, and your knowledge, everything. You're, you're. I'm so so proud to be your friend. Thank you so much. And my. Thank my, you. Yeah. Yeah. We have to continue that uh, other day. I don't want to take more of your time. It's. Uh, again, I, I tell you, thank you so much for for being here, making uh, so or giving some hope to the people. I mean, I feel much better now also because uh, even if this is uh, all bad news, but uh, it opens. I mean, I also I understand and I learn every time more when I talk to you and, and uh, watch all those updates on Facebook. Uh, I mean. It, at school, we, we just learn bullshit, like 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 that the book you you showed us on the on the, on the screen. I mean, uh, we we cannot count on those kinds of, or these kinds of informations. Uh, we need to to go personal with that and uh, show our own evidence because there is a lot of evidence here. And I hope people get get it and wake up too. So yeah, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so when you wanna switch off, it's okay and. I will, I will just stay some minutes more on the live stream channel to say to, to the people some words more. Okay. And Okay. So okay. That's Sounds it. Good. Thank you, Hans. You're Thank wonderful. You it's great, great to talk to you again. You're you're such a warm-hearted guy. You just you emanate love and caring to people. People see it in 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 everything that you do. So thank you for what you're doing, and I look forward to doing it with you again. Thank you so much. See you later. Peace and. Bye bye. All right. Take care. Good okay. night. Bye bye. Good night. Okay. Uh, yeah. Russ is gone for today. Uh, yeah. I will save save now this um, video to and upload it as soon as possible to YouTube. I will be uh, here live still some minutes more. If you wanna know something more or if you wanna talk to me, you can do that uh, using uh, Uvu now because Skype. Uh, causes uh, a lot of problems at least on my computer I cannot even open Skype anymore I, I don't know what to do and I, I also I got some um, news about that uh, that uh, Skype is controlled uh, there are uh, people uh, I think the CIA or I don't know who because it's part of Microsoft and all the system and everything but Uwu is still uh, a wonderful uh, option to uh, to get together like today and uh, it works perfectly. I had a very perfect sound, very good uh, picture quality and everything. So I think we, we could uh, use that Uwu to uh, uh, have the future conversations. And yeah, and please also share um, this video. And yeah, people have to know. I mean, uh, it's, I cannot do more. I don't have that money to, to uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, to to travel, to, to have speeches or invite guests uh, in person. The only option I have is here on the internet doing those kind of live streams. And yeah, by the way, I, I will uh, invite you for some uh, new upcoming live streams. There are at least very important two, uh, or two more live streams which are very important. One will be, uh, will be with Alfred Weber. Uh, I think it's on 25th of this month of July 
and then for uh, October I'm planning a 24 hour live stream this will be very very professional and I I, I am working on that uh, right now very hard because this will be a, a like a also topic of peace and awakening it will be a 24 hour live stream with a live concert not just from here it will be worldwide I have a lot of friends on Facebook they are uh, singers uh, 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 they write poems they are in a rock group or whatever uh, or, or no making some uh, uh, how do you say uh, performance and whatever and uh, I invite all those people many have already confirmed that they are interested to do that and I will live stream this it's a long time and it's uh, it has to be 24 hours because uh, it's for the whole planet so I mean it's not just American uh, time schedule I, I have to cover up all the, the planet you know Germany Australia will, will be present uh, Spain the there's a lot of talents outside and I hope there's also uh, uh, some uh, uh, maybe famous uh, artist out there who is uh, know maybe the Rolling Stones I don't know uh, the invitation is for all of you maybe you you're, you're also who is watching now this video maybe you're playing uh, you're playing an instrument or uh, you're uh, famous and uh, with your friends or whatever I give all of you a chance to be part of that uh, event will be live streamed we will use also uh, that Uvo for that so people can uh, do that concert in their own place maybe they even can organize organize, organize uh, a private concert there uh, rent maybe uh, I don't know auditorium or in a park uh, the only thing what they need is an internet connection microphone and a webcam so uh, I can switch them like you see me now here on that live stream and later on YouTube they can uh, be there uh, on my computer and I put the whole thing on the internet and all the people can watch that in live so uh, this is a very big project I have here and thanks a lot to my uh, uh, a new friend I have uh, uh, is a director I made a uh, some days ago it was actually last week last Sunday I make a I made a short movie about uh, the, the the big dictator movie is a movie uh, from uh, Charlie Chaplin the original and that remake is exactly that scene when Charlie Chaplin is talking uh, the, the very famous speech and I'm and in that video I'm one of the soldiers there you, uh, as soon as I have that video I will also publish that and the director is very talented uh, young girl who uh, who knows how to edit the things and uh, she she will help me to design the poster so uh, with that um, help for example it is much more professional it's not just talking me maybe there will be other uh, uh, people also be involved uh, uh, who helped me out at that day I hope we can also radio stream that in a local radio station for example I still have to, to find some uh, yeah, sponsors maybe who, uh, who can help me out with that maybe I, I get a uh, uh, the opportunity to be in a, another studio and don't do it from my home to give it a, a much better quality so it's a lot of work to do I will design a, a fan page for that on Facebook or a group page whatever uh, my website which is projectlightsout.org I also I will uh, up, update that web page soon as soon as possible with the actual uh, poster and everything I mean it's a lot of work and uh, yeah this is uh, what is, has to be done this year at least and maybe other live streams maybe one with Max Bliss very soon and uh, also the human rights we don't have to forget this because uh, there's also a, a very important uh, topic here uh, to, uh, to talk about is about the mind control which is also really happening and yeah uh, I'm really back and I'm really proud to to have you watching this if you're had the, the time to watch until right now you you did it thank you <laughs> you are you're welcome in the club here you know okay uh, I will now finish that live uh, that recording save it and I will still be on on that channel for a while so just give me some seconds and uh, uh, I, will, I will talk to you soon